you know, thanks for what you do with your podcast and all the rest. Uh, you're doing a great job. Hope everybody keeps tuning in. You get a lot of good info, a lot of insights, understandings of how to get strong, how to stay strong, how to use your strength. You do a great job, dude. <laughs> you make things better than they are in real life, I think. If you don't follow Massonomics, y'all do it. Social media, uh, website, everything. Massonomics. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. Here we are at episode 360 of the Massonomics Podcast, the lifting podcast about Nerfin. My name's Tanner. And my name is Tommy. I cut a little part out there just for the sake of time. We got so much stuff to get to, I couldn't do the whole whole spiel this episode. We do. It's like sometimes you watch an episode of The Simpsons, and I don't really get it. It's like sometimes they show you the full intro, and other times you get almost nothing. See, I, don't, I never watched The Simpsons, so I'll just have to take your word for it there. So has he seen it? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you have seen The Simpsons. I mean, yes. I've seen, but I... Yeah, what I does consider- someone mean if they say they've never watched The Simpsons? What do you think that, like... I just assume every person's seen, like, 30 episodes in their life. It's just when they have, I don't know, how many episodes do they have? A thousand? Yeah, probably. <laughs> like, yeah. like, that doesn't count, you know? That's too little yeah. to count as watching The Simpsons. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so has he seen it? Mm. Sure, some, t- like, do you think anyone has not seen any of The Simpsons, though? Like, uh, you know, I know there I are people mean, in the world. Someone but definitely like, has. I mean, probably even in our own Discord here, but I... No. <laughs> you had to have seen an episode. <laughs> well, we had people that hadn't seen Dumb and Dumber, so I don't know. <laughs> I still don't believe that. <laughs> well, there was, like, five of them, so... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to believe it. <laughs> that one is hard to believe. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what I do believe? I believe that this episode right here is brought to you by The Strength Co. And exciting news. Hot off the press. Like as of minutes ago. As literally just just seconds ago, we were talking with uh, none other than the owner of The Strength Co., Big Grant. And he's got uh, big exciting news on shipping costs of his plates, uh, especially the 45s. I think they've found uh, uh, his... VP of shipping has been over there working diligently to come up with a, a new shipping they method. Found a and they've great, yeah, they've they've greatly reduced their shipping costs. So uh, what what means is you're going to get if you're looking at dollars per pound or dollars per plate, you're going to have significant savings because of uh, the reduced shipping cost. And that's probably in effect as of the time you're listening to this. Even if whether you're listening live, I think he's they're working on it right now. So. Um, pretty excited about that that it's going to significantly uh take the cost of this this already what we think is the best plate on the market the best iron plate you can get and make it that much more affordable Call so that check out the strength co and uh let them know that massonomics sent you and that you heard about the new sweet shipping deal on the massonomics podcast they're my plates and i want them now that's right all right jg the, wentworth said <laughs> that's right uh this episode is also brought to you by barefoot shoes they're not for your hands barefoot shoes were inspired by your feet shoes started as simple coverings to protect our feet allowing us to thrive while retaining the strength and functionality enjoyed by barefoot living now modern shoes restrict our feet compromising our natural movement shoes should be wide so your feet and toes can spread flat to connect you to the ground and be flexible to give your feet freedom. Wearing barefoot shoes allows you to reclaim your foot's functionality and strength so you can lead a stronger life by experiencing improvements in joint pain, muscle activation, sensory feedback, balance and stability, and biomechanics. Tanner and I both have barefoot shoes for the gym. We got our Ursus high tops, and we have the Bruin boot, and we love them. We think they're great. We wear them every workout, and uh, you should get them too. And while you're at it, go to or if you want to get a pair for yourself, go to www.barefoot.shoes. And while you're there, use code Massonomics to save 10% on your next order. www.barefoot.shoes, code Massonomics. Thank you, Barefoot Shoes. I think they also have some sort of giveaway going on right now where they're just uh, getting their Discord uh, up and up and running, getting that more active. And I think you can maybe maybe get some... I, I don't know what the details, but check it out. Check out their Discord uh, Discord action. Big hot Discord action that they got going on Big over there. Big hot Discord. <laughs> hot, steamy Discord very, action. Very, very, very hot, intense Discord they have. Yes. 
Uh, oh boy, we, Tommy. Yeah, this Where list. Is, this list. Actually, I was laughing because when I was editing the last episode, you know, I don't listen to the whole thing. I kind of, you know, you, you get the beginning to make sure things are all lined up, and then you just kind of periodically check in as the episode goes on. But yep. between doing the audio version and the video version, I, I feel like I get a good chunk of, of the listening experience again. And I had to laugh because I believe there was a couple things we said we're going to cover this week. Last week, we said that at the beginning of the show and we never talked about them again the rest of the show. So uh, <laughs> several of those things are still in there again. But on the topic of what we were just, uh, we were just talking about barefoot shoes. We did, someone brought up in the Discord, they sent a link to a barefoot boot review, which someone was by, from the Massonomics Discord. Yes, yeah, someone in the Massonomics yeah. Discord, which... Uh, I want to get the channel right here. I think it's Anvil and I'm just looking on YouTube. Uh, Rose Anvil. And this guy has like a big channel and he does, yeah, 730,000 subscribers. He does like super in-depth reviews of shoes, like from a from an objective level where he's actually looking at the quality of the materials. Like he actually measures the thickness of the things. He cuts every single shoe in half to get this good cross section of seeing how it's actually made, how it's put together. He knows all these really technical terms for how the things are built. Um, and the yeah, review, if you're a, if you're a cobbler, you're really going to like his, his oh, stuff. If you, if actually, like, if you're into shoes yeah. at all, because he, he yeah. does everything from, you know, like your classic red wing boots and things like that to Nike uh, air force ones to Yeezys. I mean, he covers like, Every single type of shoe there is. And I think on the Barefoot review, he had a, there was a counter. Did you catch that? I really liked that. The amount of shoes they've cut up and they've cut up over $50,000 worth of shoes, which is insane. But uh, the, the, the title, it's a little confusing because the title for the video is the truth. Why barefoot boots aren't durable. And what he's talking about there is he's talking about the whole segment of barefoot boots. Barefoot, B-A-R-E-F. O-O-T. But, and so it's a little confusing because it, it right away it sounds like he's going to be critical of the sh- of the barefoot boots but he had really positive things to say about him he he was he thought, critical like he he took a critical look at yes, them yes. and you know like uh, a really honest look but overall like I kept waiting for that too I'm like when is he going to say the bad you know when is he going to dig into why these aren't durable or good and uh you know I mean he had pros and cons of them mm-hmm. for sure but overall like I think a really positive review, especially at the price, wasn't it? He did. And he, yeah, that's what that was to me. The big one that stuck out was he he seemed to think very highly of the qualities at the price point for Barefoot being, you know, not a giant multinational company. He was pretty impressed with the with what they were able to offer. You, you know, what other point thing that he pointed out that I kind of appreciated a, a little bit is uh, more about the company, not necessarily the shoe itself, but how in the um, the space of of minimalist shoes, yes. how granola or depending on what, what term you want to use, but how like, uh, over like, the top, uh, yeah, like hippie free yeah. reign. We're one with nature, right? The whole, right. the whole segment is whereas barefoot positions themselves a little bit differently in the market. And I'm like, yeah, I do actually see that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that, that resonates with me a little bit. Yeah. Cause pretty much he, and I don't pay a ton of attention to the barefoot shoe market, but he made it sound like basically everyone in there tries to be this vegan, eco-friendly right. thing. Um, not not saying you, not saying barefoot isn't eco-friendly, but everyone like right. actually tries to brand themselves as we are a green, eco-friendly, vegan, all this. And he's like, yeah, barefoot doesn't do that. Like they have their own own way of doing things, which right. is is a strong advantage. Like, yeah, you don't want to be like everyone else in your segment, you know? Right. So check that out. And if you're... Uh, feel so moved as to buy a pair, make sure to use code Massonomics and save 10% while you're at it. You'd be just a stupid bastard not to do it if you ask me. <laughs> You'd be one dumb <laughs> son of a bitch if you didn't do that. <laughs> With all <Okay>. due respect. <laughs> <laughs> With all due respect, you'd be quite the idiot. <laughs> okay. Whoa, what do we go to? There's a lot of interesting topics in here. <laughs> there is oh got man some good ones in there that i, I have like some to... i have some really ambiguous ones that i'm gonna hit you with and i don't yeah. i don't know you pick i pick the first topic you go next well at some point in time i do want to talk about um about thor you know his announcement <laughs> mm-hmm. of uh coming back to powerlifting mm-hmm. um let's t- that's gonna might be a little bit of a conversation though you know i don't know that's my only thing mm-hmm. yeah let's just talk about that though okay so 
<laughs> Thor announced on his YouTube channel, I don't know if you saw this, that he is coming back to strength sports and coming back in a big way. Did you watch the video at all, Tommy? I watched like the, the quick, notes? I watched like the clip or the, someone had some condensed version of it. I didn't okay. watch the whole thing, but I saw it. Well, I'll give my Cliff Notes version of it for the people listening in case you haven't seen it. So Thor has been, I don't know, whatever, boxing for the last couple of years, been retired from Strongman. And he kind of is on record saying that boxing was fine, but every day of training felt like work. It never felt like a passion or something that he loved. And I could totally understand that. Uh, But he said he wants to get back into strength sports. So he's got a very specific plan lined out for that too. 2023, he's getting back in via powerlifting. And then his plan would be to transition back to strongman in 2024. Uh, and, he met, and he threw out, like, the Rogue Strongman Classic and the Arnold. And it's funny, I don't think I heard him say World's Strongest Man. Mm. You know, I, I assume he, if he was doing all those, he would be competing at World's Strongest Man. But he said, you know, I've got a, my eye on a few competitions. And he mentioned the Rogue ones. But, you know, his sponsor being Rogue, that makes right. sense that he would say that, too. Yes, yes. Uh, Anyways, the part as it relates to, I'm, I'm excited to see him come back in a strong man, obviously. Mm-hmm. Like, that's only good for the sport, in my opinion, because it's like, oh, what can he do now? Totally, yes. And all uh, everyone involved in the sport has to be like, ah, uh, yes, like they're just seeing <laughs> yes. dollar signs. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Especially with, like, sh- with Brian on his way out, you know, uh-huh. one foot out the door now, too. It's like, yeah, get someone else back with, the, you know, the big star power. Um, but in 2023, by the end of the year, he basically, I, I mean, I think he said, I am going to, not my, not even like my goal is to, but almost like, yes, I'm going to break uh, Dan Bell's highest total ever record in powerlifting, which is 26, uh, 2606 or whatever that is. So his, his wrapped record, the high highest ever raw total, regardless of weight class, is his goal to break uh, in 2023. And he kind of eventually said like in, he'd probably compete in like November or December. Mm-hmm. Uh, so right now we're looking at what, like 10 months away or yeah. nine months away. Yep. Um, so a lot of, there's, there's definitely some things to unpack there. You know, I think there's a lot for those to people, unpack there. Yeah. Those people that maybe aren't so much a power into powerlifting, but are just a Thor fan. They might look at that and be like, Oh, he's going to do, do it. Why yep. would he not do it? How could he not do it? And, uh, my thing is, he did that powerlifting meet, I think it was in 2018. And he was strong then, very, very, very strong at that yes. point in time. You know, at kind of the peak of it, you know, weighing well over 400 pounds and uh, kind of ex- excelling at all the lifts at that point in time. And I think he totaled like 24.25 or 24.50, somewhere around there. So a couple hundred pounds away still from... 150 pounds at least away from these numbers he's saying he'd have to hit to to break the to- the all-time total now that Dan's got. And when I add up lift by lift, it doesn't pencil out to me. I just don't see how he hits all the numbers he's got to hit within a year. I'm not saying he could never do it, but in that time period, you know, where he's at now, that would just be so drastic. I Yeah, I and that's what I, I I totally agree with you too. The the strength thing you know, I haven't kept the closest tabs on what his training looks like nowadays, but um, just the few videos he's posted, the strength thing doesn't seem doable in when we're talking like nine months here. Um, I'm not positive. It's doable for him ever. Right. I'm not right, positive. Right. Yeah. But you, and but, you, but you just can't ever like say, well, no, he's, I mean, he's right. obviously, I, I wouldn't rule it out. He could, he's the type of guy. He yes, could do it. Right. There's a yeah. lot of people, the vast majority of people, if they said they're going to do it. You'd be like, <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Like, Thor saying it, there is a chance. It's still right. going to be incredibly hard to do, but the guy has the potential to possibly do it one day. Yes. But to say nine months from now, that seems really hard to believe. Like, really hard to believe. I don't see it. I don't see him. I mean, I guess I'll look silly if I, if it, when, when he does it, if that's the case. But when I see it, I'm like, I would bet a lot of money on, on at the end of 2023. Dan having the all-time record, if I had to pick one person, it'd be Dan far over Thor of who mm-hmm. I think is going to well, have that all-time record. Yeah, I mean, his biggest total is right here, 24-25. So he needs to put almost 200 pounds on his biggest total ever. And that was, I would assume, you know, that was at his strongman peak in that area. Like, he was moving weights like crazy. 
he was massive then too. Um, and if that was his best total then, it's hard to believe that now when he hasn't been focusing on strength for the past several years, he's down a lot in body weight, that he's just going to come in and in nine months break this record. You know, right. if, if he's at the end of 2024, I'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah, he's yeah, giving himself some the time. The longer window he gives it, the more I think it's possible. But, but also the other factor there is the injury potential gets so high. Like, as mm-hmm. you get stronger and stronger there, like, it just but, is more likely. But he's obviously durable, like, as a strong He is. Man, and and there, speaking, the, you know. the wild card would be, you know, when he did that last meet, I'm not sure how much of a break he actually took from Strongman. Was that when he was right. done? Or was he still competing? I think he was still in on? the mid. You know, he was really primarily still training for strongman. I yeah, would give so then him that. You just say, that. like, how, you know, what was the fatigue level from strongman? Did that have an right. impact on his meat? But even if it had an impact of 80 pounds, he still has quite a ways to go. You know, it, it's he's not there. So that that's why the numbers, like you said, just don't quite add up at this time. They don't to me. And <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm I'm excited that he said that though. I think oh, it's really for sure. interesting yeah, it's, for the sport. And anytime you got guys making a run at the biggest totals of all time, like those are the most fun, yeah. the most fun uh, meets our list but to watch. I would bet all of my money on Dan. I would bet on Dan in mm-hmm. this. You know, like there's just. Uh, I would too. the The other variable thing that I would wonder about is what is he going to do for the meat? Because all of these meets have been. You know, Iceland meets was which yeah. is essentially a local well, it's in meet. His gym. Right? Know, yeah. Is it going to be? Is he going to go to an actual meet and do this, or is it going to be another Iceland thing? Which, okay, if they put the date on the calendar and it's way out, and it's ideally it would not be just him doing it again. It, you know, it'd be an actual powerlifting meet where he is a competitor, and <laughs> you don't know how the day is going to flow perfectly because there's other people competing. There's other things going on. That to me is a real powerlifting setting. So it would be nice if he actually did it under those circumstances too. I hope so, because at a certain point it's like, okay, come on, man. You know, yeah, you just do what everyone else that, is doing. You get that asterisk on it and it's yeah. just like, Oh, like really do you want, do you need to put it there? Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> it, it'll be fun to watch though and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And no doubt he's going to do something strong in that yeah. amount of time. I mean, yeah. He's going to put together healthy. a good total for sure. Right. You know, but it, like, in his little warm up meet he did here not too long ago, I think he benched like a little bit over four hundred pounds. You mm-hmm. know, so he's got. And to, I mean, to get there, he's going to be benching closer to six hundred. <laughs> yeah, he's know? got a bench probably pretty close to six. You know, if you just break the numbers down, he's got. Uh, he's got to go six, a, a thousand, and a thousand. Right. You know, I mean, he's not going to do and a thousand on deadlift, but. R- well, that's that's the other thing. Someone might say, "Well, he deadlifted eleven hundred pounds before," mm-hmm. and well, that's strongman style with straps, a suit, all that. You know, mm-hmm. so. And also not after squatting a thousand pounds and benching, benching six hundred pounds. Yes. So that's yeah. why I'm like, I don't think I don't think he's going to get there by a thousand by a thousand pound deadlift. It's going to be a mm-hmm. nine hundred and something deadlift. So that means the squat has to be a like, thousand fifty, you know, mm-hmm. like in that neighborhood. And his so best squat ever in a meet is nine seventy. So then he right. needs, you know, he needs like a, a eighty to ninety pound PR on squats. Yeah. While also uh, having a you know, 50 pound PR on bench too. Yeah. Well, we'll be, I'm most interested to see if he tries to get in on the lift hard, live easy classic to kind of like psych <laughs> out know. Dan a little bit. I know. I know. That's it's, I'm just waiting to get that call that he's, he's <laughs> picked his meat and this is where it's going down. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine if that actually happened? We'd have to say, we're going to need a bigger venue. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to need a bigger boat <laughs> to get Thor here from Iceland. <laughs> Uh, yep. So we'll probably, that's something we'll probably continue to check in on as the year goes on. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, we'll have our, our, uh, research team checking on that and we'll report yeah. back. Yeah. I'm getting a little thirsty. I thought I was just thinking the same thing. All right. Reach for that can number two, Tanner. This is the second of our, oh, Shwing. there it is. Oh, baby. You see that two on there? Uh-huh. Can't it's because I'm too thirsty wrong. right now. That's too right. wait any God, longer to drink, drink this. Drink spotter looks nice, too. Yeah. It pops. Okay, so this is a f- official what's in the can segment. I do <laughs> not know what's in the can. No, you do not. I'm going to pop the top, though, here, see if I get that class- classic crispy crack. That's always step one. It is. I got to put my hands over this to cover it up. Yeah, it was a fairly crispy crack, I suppose, relatively. 
Hmm. Oh, that's a tough one. It is a tough one. That does not call to me like the Nicola did last week where I just like knew I'm like when we drank the cola beverage, I thought right away, I, that's a flavor I know. We now got done just, recording last yeah. week, and I wanted to tell my wife so bad about the Nicola, and mm-hmm. she was sleeping, so I had to tell her the next day, and she thought I was insane. And then when she tasted it, she goes, yeah, this is not good. This is terrible. This is one of the worst LaCroix I've ever had. She didn't like it? She did not like it at all, and I've had multiple since then, and I just think, am I actually crazy? Is this good or not? And I still like it, so I don't, I don't yeah. know. This one doesn't. Doesn't scream at me the way that did, though. Mm-hmm. It's almost like I'm getting hints of pamplemousse, mm-hmm. but with another layer, a sweeter layer. Mm. It's not quite the. Mm. That's hard. I'm not going to get this one right. It is sweet. It's it's far sweeter than that, but it's kind of I feel it still. So I'm going to say like grapefruit. Strawberry grapefruit or something like that. Strawberry grapefruit. Yeah. Go ahead, peel that. A sparkling water, of course, and I don't know variety, but yep. Take a little look. Take a little look. See into this. Well, we got a Lacroix, and it's a tall, fancy boy. It's a tall, fancy Lacroix, and well, that looks like a grapefruit, but what is that? Melon pomelo. You say what What the hell is that? Cantaloupe pink grapefruit. Oh, so I had one of the, I mean, I think I was in the right. You were, you were very on when you said grapefruit, but there's something a little sweeter and yeah. that would be the pink cantaloupe. Yeah. And I honestly, it didn't taste like strawberry to me, but I just couldn't tell what the, you know, the, no, I was I, just trying to pick a sweeter fruit. Yeah. I thought that was a really good guess. Um, Cause you do, you can pick up the pamplemousse in there for yeah, sure. Yeah, It's there, but, but it's then you're like, there's something different going on. Yeah. I don't know that it's better than pamplemousse. I don't like it as well as pamplemousse, though. I think they're kind. Of, I don't think I do, but I still think this is. I still think good. this is a four to me. It's still really good. If uh, if you were on the fence about pamplemousse and you tried this, I think this would this would get this would people, be like a bridge. Yeah, yeah, because it sweetens it up a little bit. You right, know? it does. It does. Man, Lacroix with these strong. I think they've. I think they've really. Uh, I think it's the skinny their cans. Flavor profile, yeah. I think the skinny cans is where they where they do their have a little more going on. Yeah, you said four. I think this is a four for me. I'm gonna give it the three and a half. It is really good. It's definitely yeah. good. It's no go Nicola. Th- so what kind of melon is it? It's cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. Mm-hmm. Are you a cantaloupe guy? Do you eat cantaloupe? Cantaloupe is, what is cantaloupe and what is muskmelon? Does anyone know the difference? I do not know. No Nobody idea. Nobody knows that. Are those are inter, almost inter? Which one's green and which one's yellow? So cantaloupe is yellow, like the actual fr- fruit part mm, of it, right? According to the first picture I see in Google Images, cantaloupe is green or yellow. God, what is the difference? Perfect article. What is the difference? Uh. Hmm. As we speak, uh, basement Brandon has got some hot leads for me on barbells that I've we've been te- texting back and forth on. So hmm. I've been uh, been after the American barbell. Uh, you know, he yeah. has the recent video on it, the stainless steel one. Is- yeah, the stainless steel one. Um, so he's he's got a hot lead on a, a good one for me. So what do you mean, like like they're hard well, to or something? No, he's got. He's actually got me a very minorly blemished one. Oh, for a, a good price. You said perfect. By the time it's in the gym, it'll have a very even <laughs> more minor blemishes. That's the tr- <laughs> that is the har- the harsh truth about uh, it's the chew- <laughs> the chewy bar uh, is the bar, and this is the the twenty five. Uh, what is that terminology? Uh, TPI. Oh yeah, version of it. And um, but yeah, that's the that's the real truth though about bars at Mass Stomach's gym is. Blemish bars are more than welcome because that shit gets used, <laughs> you know, yeah. like the second it hits the gym, it's a used bar. They're, anyways, they're right? not, uh, they're not trophy pieces They're They get put through the, through the paces used and abused. Uh, okay. I had the other day, this is probably the first time in like five years where I had a day at the gym and I'm like, I just feel on right now. Like I feel so good. 
like I was felt in my head. I'm like, these are heavyweights. I'm moving them good. I'm not tired. I feel like I'm getting a great workout in and I have not felt that feeling in so long. It was so refreshing. So, um, so what's I, the reason for it though? What do I you, think I think it's because I'm finally off of eights and I'm on to, uh, to sixes now. Yeah. And just those two reps is a big difference. And also I'm now moving, starting to get to the point where I'm kind of moving weight again. You know, when I when I first started juggernaut, I was so conservative with everything just because I needed to get some momentum going that way. The numbers were so low. Yeah. And I started my my set the other day. My top set was like three. I was at 355 for a set of six. And I'm like, that was so easy. It was a top set. I think I rated it at like five and a half or six. It was so easy. And then as the day went on, and I never do this in Juggernaut, I actually had to start putting weights on as my sets went. So I had five sets of six at 315. And I think I ended the day at like 335 on those. Oh. And it was just like, they'll still, I was still like, I guess I'll put this as a seven, but I don't even yeah. know if this is a seven. Like it felt right. so good the whole way through. And it's it's been like years since I felt like that. So that was probably the biggest win I've had in lifting. And so it was a, a very long time. It was very refreshing. Oh, and it was awesome. And I just eights eights are so hard. They're just always like, I, I don't, I don't ever condition my body. It's like, it never gets used to it, but also right. having kids, I, you never sleep well. So I think that that doesn't help either. You're just always tired when you get into the gym, but six, yeah, we're in a whole different ball game now. Having kids and a few jobs and stuff like that, you kind of oh, like uh, the, the life stressors and then the sleep is so yeah. damn hard. It's so hard. It, it's so hard. So, yeah, things feel like they're going in a so better direction. So are all your lifts going pretty good? Though? Oh, yeah, like, they all yeah. they all are going really good. And actually, well, I have a little video. We'll have a not to oh, yeah. spoil too much, but I had so an RP it, 10 week about a week ago or a week or two ago. We'll have a I recorded. I'll have a video of that going on YouTube here sometime soon. But um, yeah, so that video will probably come out uh like, will it come out the week that this podcast comes out? Either that week or the week after, one of the two, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, we got a lot of videos in the right. hopper, so it's just like whatever we decide to prioritize. But right. it'll be sometime in the next couple of weeks here. Um, but like my week 10, it was everything felt great. It was all awesome. It was deadlifted. I think my top set was 375 deadlift, two sets of six, which I have not done. That, and I you're mean, just a, doing barbell deadlift just now, straight or? up conventional yeah. deadlift three two uh, set of six at 375 it felt great i rated it at the seven like it was i mean i'm, I'm starting to feel like damn am i on to something again like am, yeah am i moving weight and like am i getting stronger and it's starting to feel like it so uh it's starting to make the gym be really really exciting again yeah so Any juggernaut good? baby get on it Any, was that a juggernaut ad right there or? it almost is now that i yeah. think about it out loud but <laughs> And that part wasn't paid. <laughs> it wasn't. I was just, was just I'm just very fun. excited for lifting again because yeah, yeah. I can actually feel myself getting stronger. It was, you know, there was that stretch when Massonomics Gym was new and it did feel like every single week. I think everyone would agree. Like every week we were all getting stronger every single week. It was just like, up oh, more weight goes on the bar, more weight goes on the bar. And you just never could slow down for like a year straight. And it's kind of getting that feeling again. Yeah. Well, that's really good. That is exciting when it's like that. It's that's the hashtag commercial gym effect, is what they call it. <laughs> yes, yes, it's a hundred percent what that is. Okay, I'm confused. Further, uh, someone from the Discord posted a video of, or a image of cantaloupe versus honeydew. That's why and, I was I okay, left so it because cantaloupe, I, that is what I associate to me as cantaloupe is the yellowish orangish fruit. Uh, that's what I always always think. Do you ever use that for that term? Like, no, I, I call that musk melon. I do too. I do too. Do you ever call that honeydew? Uh, I think it's a different thing though. Okay. But what is the green one then? The green one he's saying there is honeydew. And someone else from the discord is saying that those are both test technically musk melons. Those would both be categorize as well that's why melon. it's confusing because this article that's why i left it because they started saying oh and then yeah. they started mixing blends and making different ones and no one really knows what they're I'm like okay you're not giving me an answer here yeah no nah, some people are saying they've never heard the phrase musk melon you oh. use that right you use oh, that yeah, term, that's, right that's uh like that's what people around here call the green one that's commonly that i'm aware yes, of yes although i'm sure. not i'm a little ha hazy on this whole thing I, I have heard honeydew but i think the more commonly used term around here is musk melon Yes. I wonder if it's a Midwest thing, though. Yeah. Huh. 
to be continued on the musk melon <laughs> some things musk melon just, debate. some things in life you just never get answers for right <laughs> that is true uh, uh how much time do we have what time are we getting our guest on it uh i think we got about 10 minutes until okay. we get our guest on the horn Oh, okay, we also we do some, have support, some supporting our supporting members we want to talk about. And All uh, right. Well, then I'm going to talk about this one thing. We have some fun things for after that we okay. can go on and on about. But, um, okay, I wrote in here, IG verification. Have you heard anything about this, Tanner? Um, all I think, I, I know very little about it. So uh, what, here's what, I tell, what I'll tell you I think I know about it is that they're going to do basically what Twitter did, what Elon did with Twitter recently where it's, you're going to have to pay to be verified or, or there maybe, maybe that's not the right way to phrase it. Maybe it's not, you're going to have to pay to be verified, but you could now pay to be verified or something like that. It's a paid subscription service to be verified, I guess. Yeah. So that's, that's what the rumor is right now. And what happened and I, I was trying to find a more recent article and I was having trouble finding anything, but what it looked like it happened is someone was digging through the code of Instagram and found something that hints at, paid verification badge in the code and i mean it doesn't take much much uh <laughs> brainstorming to come up with well a paid verification badge like that's you paying to do it and that is what twitter recently tried to roll out and i think right. had pretty poor results but uh with instagram assuming they did that thing and assuming that did come to happen it would be you know okay anyone can be verified if you pay to do it but then also it's not just well you get a blue check mark by your name that's not that's not the incentive Right. I mean, yes, for some people that but, is the incentive. Well. But but the grower but the the growing incentive, the growing need for it is well. And also the people that pay the money, we give preferential treatment right. to their posts. We give uh then you know, we give them more exposure, more reach, more all of those things. So now all of a sudden you're dumb not to do it because right. well, as a business, that is a right? huge market. Yeah. yeah, it's a huge marketing thing for our business. So you'd be dumb not to do it. And, but then it also turns into, well, then everyone's going to do it, you know? So then I, I also, you're not actually really up on anyone because everyone will just be doing it. But maybe not everyone. Maybe it will s separate the wheat from some of the lightest chaff of where it is. The people that don't have the budget to actually, <laughs> but then at the same you know, time, like, is that who you're really competing with in space anyways? Well, you no, know, like that's, it shouldn't be, but maybe, maybe sometimes like you get such little reach now where it just like. No, no, it puts us on this like above the bottom. Like it's like no, no, you get this minimum uh, threshold of of reach here because like you are in the because percentage of accounts that are gonna pay for it relative to all the accounts on Instagram uh, well, yeah. is still gonna be really low. You know because most of the people on Instagram are individuals that aren't gonna shell out. I don't, I don't even know what it is actually. Well, and I that is, and then that turns depends on how much is, it is. What is the amount of if money? Like what, you know, if it's 20 bucks a month, it's whatever. It's more. It. Right. I think, I mean, like for, in my eyes, I'm like, well, Mastonomics would sign up for day one, even not knowing what exactly it does. It's like, we can't afford not to do it, you know, basically depending on what the advantages are, even if they are minimal, it's like, well, we got to capitalize on it. We have a business that depends on it, but for individuals, they're going to say, why would I pay $20 a month? I really don't care. I use this to look at my, mm -hmm. what other people, you know, I post like a few, few of my lifting videos. If you know, for our space, that makes, makes sense. But I just am like overall more, com more Instagram accounts will not pay for it than will, but almost all of the business accounts will pay for it. So I think. with that logic, then do you say like, where's the line? Do they say, well, okay, it's $500 a month to be verified because if you're Coca-Cola, $500 a month, well, right. they're already verified, but right. I'm assuming they're going to start making these people even pay more. But you know, for a lot of big businesses, 500 that's, is right. nothing like Wouldn't absolutely anything. like that is less yeah. than a penny. You know, that's nothing. Right. So then do they say, well, it's 500 and now it's like, well, also we you know, we're a business, so do we get lumped in with that too? And it's five hundred for us, which right. not that that wouldn't be doable, but that's also really annoying to pay Instagram. No, that $500 would be much more a month. Like, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. If it's fifty or twenty or thirty or sixty, you know, that's like no, we can't. E even a hundred, it's just like yeah, yeah even a hundred, like, yeah, if we you're have to guaranteed, like you can see the numbers yeah. and like this is way more. It's like yeah, it's it's a no brainer, but right, five hundred starts to be a lot of money to give Instagram on a <laughs> right. basis, right. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. I think It's still funny to me that it's taken this long for them to start to go to a model where people are just straight up paying them. I know. Just to be, 
I know, think like, I, yeah, it must have just been playing the long game of no, we'll just do this so long that people just yeah, it starts to be a part of their of their life. It's just something that's always around, and now that they think that they can't live without it, now we make them pay. Right. I'll, I'm curious that uh, that one to massonomics is particularly important important of course of what's going on there but maybe it could be a good thing though maybe it it's could. uh it you know I'm n- I don't necessarily view that as a negative for us as a business that operates pretty heavily in that space you know like it could be a negative but it like, could it well yeah if that number is a thousand dollars for businesses across right. the board then it's like a thousand dollars really and then you start to feel like all right we're just left behind in the dust now yeah, if it was a thousand, but the advantages were oh, if you're getting ten times great, the reach, it's twenty still times like, the reach. No, nope, yeah, I would. If yeah. for us, it would still be like, yeah, we'll we'll still do yeah. it. You yeah. know, and like even that's a huge amount of money for us, but it'd still be like, no, it's you know, <laughs> considering what ads and different things like that yes. cost. If if it's really helps you reach that much, like that would still be worth it, even at that. Price, I think. But. I think the scarier thing there is that if you just say, okay, yeah you do it for a little bit and you say, all right, it was good in the beginning, but now everyone kind of does pay that amount, whatever that is. Assuming we're talking, if this is in the hundreds or even a thousand dollars a month, right. okay, you do it. you maybe you're an early adopter. You get Instagram is really pumping the numbers right away and you feel good right. about it. And then after like nine months, it starts to feel like, I don't even know if this is doing anything anymore. And then you leave at that point. Is it, your account is just left in the you're dust. screwed. You're, you're like just, you're not getting. Your you might as well is, delete your yeah, account. Yeah, your reach is nothing now because Instagram says, "Well, you're not paying." So if you're not paying, nothing is nothing's gonna be coming your way now. That would really suck. Yeah, because it already kind of does that. It, right, right. It would just give them an even like more blatant reason to do that. Exactly yeah, to just hit like, you while you're down. Right, right. Hmm. Interesting stuff. You know what else is interesting? What's that? The members that choose to support Massonomics each month. And we have this little segment. It's a relatively new segment to the podcast called Supporting Our Supporting Members, where uh, we like to give back to a few of them each month via this this segment. Uh, we also give back to them. All, all Everyone that subscribes uh, becomes a supporting member, gets things like access to our exclusive online Discord community, which is filled with uh, other like-minded individuals. They get discount code. Uh, they get early information on new drops, sometimes new sale items, all kinds of uh, merch, merch in the know info. Too much, too many, too many great things to mention. But to cut to the chase, this week I wanted we wanted to support Scott Dodds. The original OG supporting member, Big Scott, competed uh, in a strongman competition. He got fourth in the Masters Open. It was a brutal but fun show, he said. And I think, um, well, I know Big Tyler T was also competing in a strongman show, and I think they might have been even competing in the same show. Mm. I'm a little fuzzy on that detail, but I think they might have been competing in the same show. Big Tyler got second in the Open division, and he also said it was by far the heaviest show he's ever been to. And I did see video of Big Scott's competition, and this looked like quite the strongman competition. Uh, check out Scott Dodds on YouTube. He's got a video of the action, and it is dark as a tomb in there, and, like, <laughs> it's only lit by neon lights and smoke like, the, <laughs> the entire day. I'm like, you'd walk out of there probably at, like, 5 in the afternoon and be like, oh, my God, it's light out? Like, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> uh so it looked like quite the competition also big jess who will get to her more uh Hmm. this week competed at uh canadian nationals and won of course of course Uh, but but we will we will get into that a little bit more soon in our Uh, extended supporting our supporting member segment yeah the extended (laughs) supporting member member segment right big jonathan oldham competed in his first strongman show recently i think he got second Overall, I believe, I believe that was, yeah. Class, yeah. yeah. Uh, looked like he had a lot of fun doing it. You know, pulled a big deadlift on a, a elephant bar. Did some big yoke carries, all, all the typical strongman stuff. Did big log pressing. Uh, big David, one of the big Davids from the supporting member crew, one of the Davids, he got third in his heavyweight class at his strongman show. He had a PR on Husafil. Bramer Stone and the Denny Stones. He h- held full Denny Stone weight for uh, f- a five-second count, I think, is what he got on that. So that's pretty impressive. That's good stuff. Mm-hmm. 
for Big David, one of the Big Davids. And then Big Lou Nutter drives a Malibu. That's it. <laughs> Thank you for driving a Malibu. Uh, he competed at, uh, what is it, Ghost Clash down in Miami, I think. He did a 617 squat, huge squat. Yeah. 419 bench, 673 deadlift, broke 1700 on his total. Nice. Yeah. So that's some big numbers for Big Lou. Yeah, really good numbers. And he's got this rocking picture of him floating in the Discord, too. He looks pretty big in that picture. He looks really big in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's his a white hair. suit. A white suit just makes a white yeah. suit and bleached hair just make everyone looks big, right? His hair looks <laughs> awful. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should bring picture. that look back. Bring it back, yeah. Lou. <laughs> and he was on the uh, C Team podcast. Oh yeah, and uh, Big Keith was on the C Team mm. podcast recently. So, it's, what it's, is the C Team podcast? You're asking. That's a great question. I think it's the spot where Massonomic <laughs> supporting members go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, thank you to our supporting members. Also. Let's see, who do I want to talk about uh, here? How about Juggernaut AI, as long as we were talking about uh, yeah. all your training and how things are going, Tommy. Uh, Juggernaut AI, it's the training that I use also. Uh, well, but both been most on. importantly, it's the training I use, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's yes. the training I use. Tanner also happens to use it, but it is the training that I use. Coincidentally, I yeah. do yeah. also use it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we've got about 20 people from Massonomics Gym that use it too and have been for quite a while now, so a real good sampling size, and everyone's been making quite a bit. Of, if everyone could talk, they'd say a lot of the same things that Tommy was just talking about earlier this episode, the progress that they've been making over time. Um, it uses a, a phasic structure to get you stronger over time. You know, you go through hypertrophy blocks, strength blocks, and peaking blocks at the end, whether you actually want to do a powerlifting meet, it can peak you for that. Or if you just want to, uh, you know, generally get stronger, maybe test some numbers in the gym, you can set it up for that too. And uh, it's like having Chad Wesley Smith right in your pocket. Uh, I assume he has like some sort of breathing hole in there that he can. How did I get in this pocket? How did I get in this (laughs) bloody pocket? Uh, So check it out. Uh, when you sign up or when you check it out, make sure to go on the web browser, go to juggernautai.app. That's where you can sign up and use discount code Massonomics to save yourself 10% for the lifetime of that membership. All right. Should we get, uh, get a guest on the line? Yes, let's do it. I'm going to start removing these fools. Are you I booting got, people off? I got so caught up in the moment. I, they were thinking they were going to get a free show. No such thing as a free lunch, is there, Tommy? Not on this podcast. <laughs> or a free Discord, okay. as far as I'm concerned. Well, no, it is not free. They oh, do have uh, to pay. actually, you know what? We should have mentioned. Or do, you, do you have the number going right now or not? No, I don't yet. Um, <laughs> this episode is coming out while we're driving to the Arnold, and we have not talked about that one bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are... Uh, <laughs> We're we're there, man. We're so Actually, there. Yeah, so, well, when this comes out, I guess we're not there yet, but, but we're going to be... almost there. Yeah. We, God, I hope so, depending, weather permitting, am I right? Oh, God, we didn't talk about the weather yet either. We, we got a lot of stuff to get to after we, we talk to Big Jess here, but... So, first, yeah, make sure... Sti- yeah, if you are coming to the Arnold this week, Arnold 2023, make sure to swing by the Massonomics booth. Yeah, t- uh, there's going to be a lot of... Yeah, right by the, one. one of the front doors when you walk in. Yeah, there's a lot of other cool vendors, companies right in our area, so you're not going to want to miss that. And there's going to be awesome people popping in and out all weekend. Crew members, lifters, personalities, business owners, like you're going to want to be there. It's going to be a ton yeah, of fun. Yeah, we'll talk. Maybe we'll talk more, some more specifics even at the end of this yeah. episode. Just to, so make sure to tune into the very end of this also. All right, now we'll get Big Jess on the horn. Hopefully. <laughs> is it ringing? I never there. Now it is. So it's those long distance numbers. Oh, it takes a long time to connect it's, all the way up It takes there. a while to cross the border. I'm assuming the Mounties intercept the line. And... Hey, guys. What's up? Big Jess, is that you? 
It is me. Ah, we were hoping it was you this time. <laughs> nice. Who'd you get uh, the first time? Uh, just some, some other, other random some other Canadians. Jessica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some random Canadian. Yeah. Oh. Uh, were they nice or did they tell you to well, F off? No, they were Canadians. Of course they were nice. Oh, yeah. For sure. Uh, we're excited to get you on the Massonomics podcast for a second time. I'm super excited to be here. I actually think it might even be a third. Is it a third? It, that could be true. Tommy, what do you think? Is that, well, yeah. this would be the second time you've been a full featured guest, I think, right? I think so. Yeah, one time it was ages and ages ago, like seven years ago. Um, I think I was on here super briefly yeah. and then there was one last year. Yeah. We're going to take your word for it. You probably know better than us. Uh, so it's at least two, maybe three times that you've been on the Massonomics podcast. Either way, <laughs> you're in rare air there. You know, you we are. don't just bring anyone back. I appreciate, I appreciate that. You know, you are kind of a crowd favorite. Like your your the numbers on your podcast always do really well. So if we were smart, we'd just have you on like once a month. I think. Could you actually take one of our places and just <laughs> yeah. be a co-host? <laughs> yeah, I liked your guys' comments when you were reviewing all the podcast guests, and um, I was on there, and, and you guys just said, "Oh yeah, uh, we we don't have many women on here." Um, but she's kind of like one of the guys. <laughs> I <appreciate> that. <laughs> we we promise that's like a compliment. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so you you are making time for us because you kind of have a little bit of a busy schedule as of recent and coming up, right? Like, did you just uh, just finish nationals? I think. Uh, yeah, I did. So I just finished nationals, Canadian nationals. I had to I had to do those. I had to win my weight class to qualify for world championships. And then I got Sheffield coming up in four weeks, which if any of the listeners don't know what Sheffield is, it's, well, they probably would. They talk about it on the discord all the time, <laughs> but. Well, you, what, tell, tell us anyways, because some people, maybe so, there's some listening that aren't as active in there, or maybe they're not as up on powerlifting. I think most have heard of it, but it's worth noting. Yeah, for sure. So Sheffield is a, a meet that's getting put on by SBD. It's an invitational meet. It has the largest amount of prize money um, that there ever has been for a powerlifting meet. Um, you had to So you're talking win hundreds world. of dollars, right? <laughs> hundreds of dollars, like two <laughs> pairs of list shorts. That is big cash. Um, actually, like over 400000 USD in total prize money. Like you that's can, crazy. So you can win, but yeah, so it's, there's only 12 spots, male and female, and you had to, um, to guarantee a spot, you had to win world and be within a percentage of the world record. And then there were a few wild card spots that SBE could pick based on, um, performances at other meets than world or, um, people who are outside that criteria, but have done really high performances in the past. And how you win the meet is you break the world record in your weight class by the highest percentage. So mm. it's something that definitely has not been done before. And it's going to be kind of interesting to compete at because it's not scored like a normal powerlifting meet. It's literally who breaks the world record in their weight class by more. And that's also how you win the prize money. So you can win um, the winners of each class. They win by... Um, breaking the world record by the most. And then each individual world record you break, you can also win some cash, which is super cool. Um, I think it's going to be insane. We've never seen anything like this in powerlifting. So is your strategy going into a meet like this totally different than something like Worlds where, where you know, at Worlds the idea is probably just to do whatever it takes to beat the world record or to, to, to win. win you know, it doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't matter if you chip it by whatever they let you chip it. If you know, or, you know, if you win by 20 kilos, it's you won where here it's kind of like all or nothing, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely all nothing, which is kind of scary. Um, Cause I think we'll see a, a lot more. I don't know if we'll see more mislift because everyone's going to be sending it a lot more, or if we're just going to see 
some absolutely insane records get broken. I honestly think both because yeah. um, mm-hmm. it's so high stakes. And yeah, the strategy is totally different. You're absolutely right. World is win at all costs and often is a bit conservative. Um, right. And then here it's just get records, which totally changes things. Yeah, it's kind of a cooler element, I think. Have you added up in your mind the ways that you could potentially win money then? Have you thought about that? Like uh, me, me thinking out loud, like, so you could break, I, you know, you could break the deadlift world record for your class, I'm sure. So you, would you win money for that if you broke the deadlift world record? Yes. So I, I got to ch- double check on the amount per record, but yeah, I have, I currently have the highest women deadlift in the IPF um, ever of any weight class. Weight. So hopefully yeah. of any weight class currently, but there's a few people who are right there like a Mandalorian and um, another 76 kilo lifter Carlina. Um, I'm just going to check this. So yeah, you win. I think it's like 5,000. I think it's about 5,000 pounds per world record. Okay, that's and nobody knows what that means in US yeah, Canadian dollars, but we'll assume it's like quite I a think bit. I, <laughs> three zeros it should know. hopefully be something. I think for I think for US dollars, yeah, nobody knows. It's a uh, nobody, nobody knows. literally knows. You can't even figure it out. Yeah, it's Google just, Google doesn't know. Yeah. It gives you question marks back. <laughs> Silence on the other end of the phone yeah. across the podcast listeners. Uh, because and then l- what about like. The total, re- you know, you could probably be up there for breaking the total record, I would guess, too, for your weight class, right? And that would be a separate uh, prize, you know, if you did that, I'm guessing. Even if you didn't break by the highest percentage to win overall, if you just broke the total record, I assume that you're rewarded for that then, too. Yeah, and that's how they decide who wins, is how much you break the total world record by. For me, that might actually be tough because... It was recently set at Commonwealth by Carlina, and it's at 600 kilos, which is pretty crazy. So I'll be right up there. I don't know if I'll be able to quite hit that, but my strategy for this meet is to try to go for the squat and deadlift record. Okay. And then that will probably put me pretty high in places. And then I'll just, it's going to be crazy because I got to see what everyone else is going to end up doing because everyone is actually fairly close as far as um how close they are to the world record totals in their each respective class so it'll be kind of insane to see is there anyone in the because what what i know about it the little bit i know about it is that on the men's side uh taylor atwood has maybe not pushed his own record as high as he's had the potential to be able to do it, which suits him well for this, an event like this, because, and you correct me if I'm wrong, you'll know more than I do, but that he could uh, have the potential to really go smash his world record because maybe he's sandbagged a little bit on some of those to not break it by as much in the past. Is that correct? And is there anyone Uh, sitting in the women's side that's like that too? Or is that wrong? Oh, there's absolutely... That is absolutely true. I think Taylor Atwood has some of the biggest potential to win on the men's side because they're his own records and they look so easy when he did them. I mean, it takes everything you have to make a list look easy like that sometimes, but I think he's got a lot more in the tank. Um, on the women's side, I don't see anyone who is clearly like that because all the world records uh, have been pretty, pretty RPE 11, I would say. <laughs> Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for most of them, except for, uh, well, there's a few actually, but there's no one who's kind of clear ahead like that, like Taylor, besides maybe Carlina in 76, but that was like a top performance for her as well that she recently did. So that's, that's your, your weight class then. Does that, that kind of, how long ago that's did nice. she, how long ago did she do that? Uh, about, I want to say four months ago. Okay. The other person that I would have said that I thought might win it all for the women uh, was Leah Bavla, but I don't know if she was injured or not because she de- otherwise, if she was fully healthy, which I haven't talked to her for a while, but um, I think she might have taken the she would have taken the whole thing. 
uh, and because she recently dropped weight classes and still hit pretty much the same numbers. It's um, it's. Do you know what's the flight thing like? Then is there one flight of wen- men and one flight of women? How is that being broken up? Because that matters a lot in something like this. If you have the advantage of knowing what other people did before your attempts, like that, that could be huge. So, are do, do you know? Are you all in one flight? I have no idea. Yeah, I'm wondering. Though, you know, because it'd be yeah. if if someone else competed before you. That would be a huge advantage, I would think, for you to know, like, what they... I mean, maybe not a huge advantage, but it would be an advantage to know if they broke a world record and by how much they did it, so you had, you know, you so you could be shooting for it. But with 12... Like that, tw- yeah, 12, of, 12 would be a fairly common flight size, though. Is, is that true in the IPF? Like, what are flights like? Yeah, I, I think it would fit perfectly into two flights. Yeah. Yeah, they're normally I think I think that most is usually fifteen in one flight, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So yeah, twelve would be perfect. And they'll probably separate men and women, that would make sense. And then also with you having the biggest deadlift of uh any woman in the IPF, you should be I uh, odds are, I, I mean, I don't go know last. how they order the flights. You should get to go. You should get the last deadlift, right? If if you're pulling the heaviest deadlift that day, you know, if you're calling, would you get? Do they reorder it from attempt to attempt on deadlifts, or is it just like uh, your order is the way it is on the first go first attempts on deadlifts, and it stays like that? Or do you know? Do they reorder it? Oh, they reorder it based okay. on. Um... Lightest weight to heaviest weight. So yeah, if I if I do well and I put myself in a good position to take big attempts, I should be coming up last or close to last on deadlifts. Okay, that does seem like it'd be a big uh, a cool advantage for you to be in yeah. then too. And plus, just that feeling of I mean, you've probably done it on most of the meets you've done when you get to go out and you do that last deadlift. Like that's kind of like the most exciting point of the meet almost. It is honestly the best feeling getting the last deadlift of the day. It's my favorite. I would be um, like squats and bench. Um, I also really enjoy it, but there's just something about that last deadlift of the day. I think everyone is sometimes powerlifting gets long and boring. So I think half of it is just like, yes, this day is coming to a conclusion. <laughs> the whole oh, crowd. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to say sometimes. Like people know it always does get long and boring. But yeah, that yeah, the crowd nothing beats like the crowd for powerlifting is always at the peak when when deadlifts start uh, winding down. Like some people know it's party time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. At at nationals, you did the one cl- one weight class above your normal one, right? I did. I went to eighty four. Uh, I weighed in pretty light, so I almost could have cut but I was just worried that it would take too much out of me but yeah I competed at 84 for the first time in a long time and um yeah it went really well I uh didn't take my last deadlift I did 551 pounds as my second attempt and moved super well but because Sheffield's coming up I decided not to take it which was a very anticlimactic end to the day talking about the last deadlift it's probably the smart, mature move, yeah. <laughs> though, I suppose, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I keep telling myself that, yeah, but I always regret not taking the last one. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Tommy and I were talking about the women's weight class thing. So I think you that class you competed in at uh, Nationals there, that's the second heaviest women's weight class in IPF, right? Yeah, it is. And then there's 84 plus and that's it, which is kind of an early cutoff considering. But isn't it too early from our <laughs> standpoint? That, that seems, seems way too early. too early. Yes. <laughs> it's too early. So I could only find statistics about body weight um, in my 30 second Google search. <laughs> but um, the average weight for a North American woman is 77 kilos. So to have a super heavy weight, class be seven like 14 15 pounds over the above average. that seems a little bit 
a little shy to me. It really seems like it is to me. And, you know, just from our point was like, if, if a woman's a relatively taller woman, you know, like, I don't know, even five, seven or above or five, six or tall or anything in that range, especially if you get to be five, nine, five, 10, five, 11 or anything like that, that is not very heavy for a woman that is also like has a decent, you know, that's been lifting for a while and has some muscle mass on her body. Oh, absolutely not. It's not heavy at all. Like, I uh, I lose weight for the last five months, and I still weigh (laughs) pretty much just about that, like 80 kilos, honestly. And I'm five, seven and a half. Um, So, yeah, it is kind of interesting. Someone called me skinny at work the other day that I didn't even know. (laughs) That's interesting. (laughs) <laughs> but that is what's confusing, you know, so we, we met you at the Arnold last year and Instagram's always confusing, especially for women. Like you, you see pictures of them and they always look like giants and like you are jacked for sure. But then we see you in person. It's like, well, she still doesn't look like this, like freak, like overly large, like super, super muscular. Like you seem like you're in really good shape <laughs> and everything, but you don't seem like you're like heavy, like to the point, like, like where you're almost pushing up on like classes. super heavyweight. Like that, that's what doesn't make any sense. It seems... Yeah, it just seems like there's classes missing there. Yeah, like walking around, it would not be hard for me. Like my weight ranges a little bit, but it would not be hard for me to weigh 85 kilos. Um, and that's super heavyweight. And I pretty much look the same within about a, like, I don't know, 15-pound body weight range. I, I don't look that much different. So it's kind of funny to me. Um, just seeing that as a super heavyweight, I've always thought that was kind of wild. That um, is yeah, and the other thing is social. It is, and the other thing is social media. Always, um, one thing you never get with social media is scale. So, if you would meet a lot of powerlifters, it is generally a shorter person sport. Oh, yeah. So you're yeah. picturing in your head that all these. <laughs> yes, it is. All these people, like you guys have met a lot of these people now um were there uh yeah you think in your head oh this person's absolutely massive but then you meet them and they're absolutely jacked but they're not super tall so it kind of puts things in perspective and, well it's basically um, like we joke about it like all right if you're over six foot you're not even in powerlifting you're just in strong men now at this point like it, it's height classes it's not even hard the weight <laughs> classes you know Oh, absolutely. Like, I honestly uh, we am taller than, kind of like, it's on the women's side anyways. There's a few kind of taller powerlifters, like Leah um, is one, Joy Namani. Um, but on the men's side, it seems to be mostly, it's mostly, uh, yeah, if you're six foot, you would be an absolute giant at a competition like IPF Worlds. Oh my god. Yeah, especially in the um in tested powerlifting, there doesn't mm-hmm. seem to be there is some probably an untested where you know the you look at the super heavyweights and the guys that weigh 3 to 400 pounds, you know, some can get away with being a little taller, but even a lot of the those, you know, like Dan Dan's not a short guy, like Dan Bell when is he he's got to be over 6 foot tall, I, I think. I think he's like 6'1 or 6'2. Yeah. Um and like Ray isn't short. You know, he's, I don't know. But he's, he's also six, not, like, taller. I mean, he's, no. like, 6'1"-ish. You right. know, he's around right. the same height as us. Yeah. Yeah, it is funny. Uh, how, if if you could put a guess, like, if you had to throw out a range there, how many times uh, on the internet do you think you've been asked how, what your height and weight is? <laughs> oh, man. Like, per day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any, any way you could put yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's, a, it's at least, if it's a day that I post, it's at least a few times a day. Yeah. So, oh, I don't know. <laughs> How long have I been doing this? Like seven years? Yeah. <laughs> I don't so, know. So thousands if I had and thousands a dollar of time. Of time yeah. I'm payment on some lift shirts, so. <laughs> Let's yeah. Just say, yeah. I'd be doing pretty well. <laughs> yes. Um, that is because that is in your co- like. I like it when you, you know, in the in the context of your post, you'll even put in there and just so no one asks. Like, here's my height and weight. 
a forbidden question because I'm so sick of asking for you. What What else do you get asked that you've probably like that you you've answered more times than you can remember? Um, a lot of steroid accusations, which oh, yeah. um, I feel like that's a social media thing too. Because, like I said, you don't get scale, and you get these people, including myself, showing themselves off in the absolute best lighting as well. Although for me. They always look at my deadlift and give me a steroid accusation, but they never look at me benching. <laughs> Not once have I been seriously accused of doing steroids on a bench video. Not one single time in all these years. And you know what? I think that really means something. Yeah, like that should be your goal almost. <laughs> yeah. Like I you want to get so <laughs> strong that goal. someone thinks that I'm on on steroids for my bench press. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, the other thing is I get asked if I'm diabetic a lot in my bio and then, or what that white circle is. That kind of entertains me because you can always give a different answer. Um, my favorite is, uh, it's a circle that we put on uh, to mark the diabetic humans in case aliens come to visit or something. Someone thought I was a nicotine patch. I've just been wearing for years. <laughs> You're like seriously very yeah, addicted like, to nicotine. Just can't get kick the habit here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is cool. Those so, are probably the top the top three. On on the topic of reoccurring things on your Instagram, I, f- I feel like there's been a few um trends that I've that I've we've noticed since the last time we talked. And there's a there's a few of them. I think the first one, um the feet, feet tend to get censored a lot now, it seems like. Oh, yeah, that started as a joke but became so serious that I can never uncensor my feet again. <laughs> and you probably you probably now, like, you're, like, teasing people. It's like you're playing hard to get, so that just makes people want to see feet even more now. Like, that was almost <laughs> your own doing, I think. Yeah, and you know what? I've accidentally... So, oh, my God, the foot thing is just the whole... It's a whole different ball game. Um, I it started as a joke because um, if you ever show your feet, how it is for men, but for women, if you ever show your feet, you always get a few people who just make weirdly sexual comments about your feet, and I get tired of it. I don't like my feet, so I just started censoring them to be annoying, so like people would maybe leave, and it's just kind of funny. And then I ended up getting a lot more DMs about it. And yeah, I don't know. I just don't know where I am on the the foot pics standpoint. <laughs> I mean, on one hand, it's like if someone wants a picture of your foot and they're going to give you like five hundred dollars for it, it's like yeah, five hundred bucks know. is five hundred bucks, you where, know? <laughs> yeah. And, and, pretty like, easy <laughs> and like, I don't even know, like, I don't know where pe- everyone else has different lines and stuff, but like, would you, do you even really feel dirty about sending <laughs> someone a picture of your foot? I'm like, I don't know. It's ca- like, it's kind of gross. Like, I, like, I don't know why you like, like this, I kind of feel like bad for you. If that's like yeah. the thing that you're paying money for, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to send them no refunds. <laughs> no refunds. <laughs> Uh, yeah. What other stuff? Oh. Yeah. Well, so that, and then the other one that I feel like I've, I've, I've noticed you mentioned this several times and it, you probably get it all the time too now is people probably have to ask about OnlyFans all the time, don't they? Um, yeah, they do ask a lot, <laughs> especially in the question, the question stories. Oh yeah. Um, and a lot of, a lot of female Fitness, fitness creators they do only fans and they they do it kind of halfway so they wear they don't do full nudity so i think people are even asking about that but mm. i don't know i feel like i'm halfway on that because it's i mean if it's not nudity i'm i don't know it still feels like a weird thing to do though <laughs> and i feel like i might get fired from an actual day job if i do that so better not which would not be worth it no uh, <laughs> uh, no <laughs> it is a it is a interesting topic though and even like currently i think uh, uh from what i saw steffi cohen has been you know there'd been a big discussion about that because i think she said 
no, I won't do it. And, well, that's, and, and you she's, know, that's, even, she's right. even said like she's been offered like 40 grand to do it, which is insane just as an offer to do it, you know? Oh, OnlyFans people make absolute bank. That's why it's so tempting. <laughs> um, because I've honestly though, like I've yeah. known people, people who did it and within three months made about $75,000. Um, <laughs> One of them, okay, so I, I followed two of them just to see. I'm like, what are they doing on here? Are they are they really working it, or are they just posting pictures of them in their underwear? Are because they posting the same pictures that they could post on Insta- <laughs> that they might post on Instagram anyways? Like, yes, right. That is the golden question, and I don't have a problem with either one. But I mean, for myself personally, I just, um, yeah, we talked about maybe getting fired from my job if I post nude so yep. not something i that's just why i personally wouldn't go that route but um the one person who made a little bit less money i won't name names but she just posted kind of um like lingerie pictures but the other person um she was posting like bed over with a star over the private parts like <laughs> that scared me off i think forever <laughs> Because I thought to myself, did she start out posting pictures like she was on Instagram? And did this just progress? Does she want to be right now? But she's making so much money doing it that it's almost, I don't know. I guess it's just how much, what is your price in the end for a lot of people? For everyone, actually. I hate when people pretend like they're better than that because everybody's got a price, but yeah well see it's really easy for us because we're dudes so no one wants to see our only fans so we don't even have to is is there dudes only like i mean there probably is right like is there dudes on only fans like as creators like is there a market for that (laughs) even i don't know the answer Um, i i i I don't know any male only (laughs) fans creators but i would assume so considering the I mean, there's a market for for everything, right. and then if you're in one of those niche markets, like being a muscular woman is kind of a niche. Yeah. If you're talking about OnlyFans, a niche market, so you can really, I mean, there's there is a lot of money to be made, and so do you do you a, do you like depends on your own personal morals. Do you, Do you like the term muscle mommy? <laughs> I think it's funny yeah. <laughs> i don't really like it's that's another thing that's also progressed is it started out as just like i don't know just a funny term it's we had a teacher that said that on there and then now people are commenting asking me to give them the uppies like pick them up and spin them around and <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> okay that, that's what, i didn't know what that meant <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, so it's a learning moment for anyone who didn't know what that means today. Um, it was a learning moment for me up until a couple of months ago, actually. But yeah, I feel um, I feel like that has really gained steam yeah. online in the last like six months. I don't. I think I went from maybe never hearing the term to now. Anytime a muscular woman has a post, like you can be guaranteed to see muscle mommy in the cap <laughs> or in the comments like ten times. You know. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It, that phrase just gained a lot of popularity. It's what? always, I mean. No, I, I at you. first, well, my my thought on it at first is I thought it was kind of a pervy term, you know, like, <laughs> I'm like I feel like maybe dirty if I said muscle mommy, but now I think, may, is it maybe not? Like it is less, is it just an so odd much? compliment kind of? Right, right. <laughs> well, right. But then it's not even, it's not even just the muscle mommy part too. It's like now the descriptions where it's like, oh, pick me up and throw me down. Like, you know, it's like the whole like dominate me thing is what it turns into. <laughs> I think it's definitely, I think it's not that weird, but I think a lot of people make it really weird. Right. <laughs> like if you're just going to call someone a muscle mommy without being, without saying all the other stuff, I think it's fine. I don't find it. It's just funny because it has those like dominance connotations sort of thing. Uh, but it still can quite easily be made weirder than a lot of other phrases you would use to describe somebody. So. 
I'm kind of halfway on that one. I don't know that I'd feel c- completely comfortable calling any woman that in person. <laughs> <laughs> like, that'd be my test. I wouldn't I, risk it. Yeah. Like I'd call, uh, you know, like, uh, Meg squats company. It's buff chick. You know, I'd be like, Oh, you're a buff chick. You know, that's not, uh, doesn't have a weird, <laughs> weird meaning to it, but like to call someone a muscle mommy, I think that that, that's, yeah. that still would feel really <laughs> odd to me. Yeah, it'd be weird if you walked up to Meg Squats and you're just like, hey, are you are you the muscle mommy around this gym? <laughs> you're like, oh, that's just, I didn't like the sounds of that at all. <laughs> uh, so you're not, speaking of that, uh, Meg's booth is right by our, our booth again this year, I think. Uh, you're not going to the Arnold this year, are you? It's too close to Sheffield. I really wanted yeah. to go, but yeah, it's just too you- close. Because it uh, is because it would kind of screw up training, I assume is the reason. Yeah, believe it or not, it's about a thirteen-hour travel path to get to Ohio from here by flight. Ooh, by flight, even wow. Yeah, because I got to take a connecting flight to Toronto, and then with a layover, and it usually takes anywhere from. I think last year took me thirteen hours, but maybe eight or nine, like minimum. So it, there. it kind, kind of, of could, a whole day. Yeah, it could kind of screw up like almost a week of training then at a time where it's super important, I suppose. Yeah, you basically burn two whole days traveling there and back because it's just super hard to train before or after flying like that. So thought I better not. Yeah, that's kind of tricky for SBD then because mm-hmm. uh, I'm sure they would like to bring you in and uh, a bunch of people like you, but a a lot of people probably in that same boat that, uh, you know, they're getting ready for the Sheffield right now, so they don't want, maybe don't want to spend that time there. Yeah, I don't know what SBD is doing for the Arnold. I think their main focus is the Sheffield right now. So uh, I know they do have people going, and I think they have more, I'd assume they have more strongman competitors and from the other strength sports outside of our whole thing. For this one? Yeah, I bet you're right. They're probably leaning on the strong man guys. I mean, a bunch of them will be there competing, so they'll have access to them, too. That makes sense. Uh, have you ever eaten at 13 Pies? Absolutely. What is 13 Pies? 13 Pies is a local pizza restaurant, and it is super good. And they also have really good, I'm not a sweet kind of mixed drink type of person on account of type of diabetes, otherwise known as diabetes. <laughs> but um, they have really good mixed drinks that they make there and amazing pizza. So is that just a Saskatoon thing or, I mean, is it a, is it a chain at all or is it just there? I think it's, I think it's just Saskatoon. So if anyone wants to experience 13 pies for themselves, they'd have to make the trip the trip up there. Yeah, come on down to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. <laughs> Get your ass with 13 pies and grab some pizza. Uh, what is it like up there right now? Because it, we've actually... Are in yeah, the we've been on a real a weather kick storm. right now. Yeah, like how is it there? Oh, yeah, because you guys, we're in the same time zone. So we're we had an extreme cold warning all week it was like minus 40 with the wind minus 40 with the wind chill i think last night i don't know what that is in fahrenheit i think it might also be oh that is okay i was gonna say is that fire fahrenheit or yeah Celsius it's there, been but. like minus 20 some wind chill fahrenheit here like this week last night oh god yeah. oh yeah minus 40 is the point where they meet so it's the same yeah that's i assume you guys are having crappy weather too did it snow off I know. Yeah, we were supposed to get like 19 inches overnight last night, but we didn't get that much. It was more like uh, a foot, uh, a foot or less. So, but yeah, it kind of sucks. You know, the like talk of the town. March. Yeah. Yeah, it does suck. We got nothing. Oh, it's like a. It gives you that false spring, and then we had a extreme cold warning for a whole week. It has not been fun. False. My like car key battery decides yeah. to freeze. False spring. Full spring. 
Yep, <laughs> that ha- is exactly what could we're going to have another two to. months of this at the rate yeah. we're going. It, and you might ask, why are we talking about the weather like this to you? But <laughs> it is, we do talk about the weather in every podcast. So it'd be weird if we got someone from Saskatoon, uh, Saskatchewan, and didn't ask about the weather, actually. Yeah, it's a fair question because honestly, I, uh, yeah, we're like neighbors to the north in northwestern central Saskatoon. So <laughs> that's right. We have gotta ask about it. the weather. There's nothing else to do. <laughs> so what what what's your answer if someone asked you why is it that you live in uh, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan? Why do you live in Saskatoon? Because that's oh, we, that's something we get asked quite a, quite often is why do you live in South Dakota? Why do you live there? <laughs> Uh, I always tell them I'm going to move, but I've been saying that for the past 10 years. So um, I actually, <laughs> I don't know. I do like it here. Like I got lots of friends and family and then it's, um, honestly, there's, it's a very, um, oh man, here we go. I am just struggling. Uh, <laughs> but is that where you're from originally though? It's actually, <laughs> sorry. Did you grow up in Saskatoon? I grew up a little north of here, okay. but I, I just moved here to go to university and then um, have stayed. I am a little rooted here now because I guess I have a house here. Um, but yeah, everything's cheaper here. It's like a lower cost of living. There's lots of open space too. And I mean, um, one thing I do love about this city in particular is all the dog parks they have. Like they're really, um, it's, yeah, I just, I do love that. You don't see that in bigger cities. And the only thing I wish is that we had a an international airport because it only goes to Minneapolis and Vegas. Mm. Um, but I really like the people here, honestly. There's something that really bonds you together when you're all doing your daily life in the minus 40 yeah. degrees. It is. Like people don't get it. it. It's that shared, like, communion of suck together. Everyone's like, oh, we're all in this together, you know? <laughs> It's, yeah, it's so true. Like, uh, just uh, Accor- shared to, trauma. Yeah, according to Google, you guys got some bridges too. So, I mean, that's cool, I guess. City of bridges. I accidentally told someone that the Sid Buckwald Bridge is a Seven Wonders of the World one day, <laughs> and I got absolutely ripped for it. <laughs> so, the Sid Buckwald Bridge is just like this bridge in Saskatoon, and it's just like. I don't know. It's a normal bridge, but um, <laughs> so I was just listing the seven wonders of the world, and I, I wasn't paying attention. And they said the Sid Buckwell Bridge, and I said, "Yep, that's one." <laughs> and then they've never let me forget it for one single day in my life. <laughs> okay, Big Jess, we've got a special game to play with you. You've played it before. It's called Overrated Underrated, and we picked a uh, set of topics that are just for you. Hopefully. Th- I actually don't remember what wins we asked last time, so I hope these are new, and I think they're all new. Uh, if you remember the rules, you just you can't uh, ride the line. You have to decide if each one is overrated or underrated. Okay. So if you're ready, we'll fire into it. Uh, the first one. I. I assume you're ready. Uh, uh, that was going to be your next phrase. Is I am ready. I am ready. <laughs> <laughs> Overrated or underrated? Uh, toques. That's, that's a long pause. <laughs> Sorry, I, I heard nothing. Oh. <laughs> My phone. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was just like, he's just really thinking building about up, it. Building up yeah. to be really dramatic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Overrated or underrated? Tukes. Oh, underrated. I wear a toque every single day in my life. I was just wearing one about 30 seconds ago. <laughs> so what is a toque? Not everyone knows, necessarily. Not everyone's from Canada. What do you mean? Well, that's a Canadian oh, term. Hey, you know what? I recently learned this and I was absolutely shocked. So a toque is like um, a wool hat you put on your head, like a beanie. I think you guys would just call it a beanie. Yeah. You that, guys call it a yep, toque or a beanie? It's a beanie. Beanie. What? 
Uh, nobody here says. T- I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, unless I think, they're making us a, a real point, nobody says toque. I yeah, I think if you would. like, if you went to the Arnold and just asked someone if they knew what a toque was, I'm not sure. You might ask a hundred people, and like one of them might know what you're talking about. Oh wow! I uh, I've been calling it a Mastonomic toque the whole time. <laughs> those like orange hunting toques you guys have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like uh, I. I used, I mean, I called that a stocking hat a lot of times growing up. I don't know exactly what a stocking hat is, too, but that's uh, a term that I used to use. But I think most people just say beanie around here. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, so toques are underrated. You're a big fan, right? Oh, I'm a huge toque fan. I don't know what I would have done without one today. <laughs> Yeah. What about those hats that look like, uh, you know, they're like a baseball cap, but have like the earmuffs on the sides. <laughs> oh, I like those. They're kind of like something people in my dad's days wear a lot. It's like from or, like, the movie Grumpy Old Men. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those are actually awesome. You know what? Uh, I need to get myself one of those, actually. You just reminded me. Yeah, you should bring those and They're always bad and they got the fleece. Yeah, they should bring those back, honestly. It's <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, overrated or underrated keto diets? Uh, keto diet, uh, so overrated. I'm Also, as a pharmacist, like, the amount of people who are asking me about keto supplements, and then I ask them what their diet's like, and they're eating, like, a a muffin at the same time that they're talking yeah. to me. Like they eat so many carbs and they're like, should I put MCT oil in my coffee? And the answer is no, just don't do it. And they're trying to lose weight too. It's just, there's so much, nobody does a keto diet, right? And if they do, it just seems like for most people, not very sustainable. Don't get me wrong. There's a few things it's good for. Like, actually certain types of seizures and then for some people it's really well for weight loss and weight maintenance for diabetes even but it's just so overrated on a grand scale where where does it fit in with uh because that's uh, kind of where it came from i heard do people tell you it'll cure diabetes is that what uh a, a comment you've heard before Yes, many times. And what they don't realize is you still need insulin to process um, protein and fat. So although it will reduce the amount of insulin that your body needs to make or for diabetic, the amount of insulin you need to take, it's not going to not gonna cure my type 1 diabetes. That's for sure. Right. Well, but have you really done it before, though? I mean, <laughs> they might know yeah. something here. <laughs> I know that. Oh yeah, and then they uh, they always jump from keto to well, carnivore. We'll hear it. And that one is just annoying to me because it's basically a revamp type of keto. There's probably besides getting raging diarrhea, there are some people who have done really well on carnivore diets with. Um, like different medical conditions and stuff like that. But for me, I just think it's because what they were eating before wasn't super great. And then all of a sudden they're just really restricting themselves and eating lots of protein and like quality food that all of a sudden they feel so good. And then the, the diarrhea, lots of people get probably really cleans you out too. So <laughs> I don't know. Nature's but, cleanse. <laughs> Nature's meat cleanse. Yeah. It's like a juice cleanse, but. More Midwestern. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> okay. uh, overrated or underrated? This is a hot topic. Overrated or underrated? Jorts. Oh, man. <laughs> the jorts war. <laughs> Are we starting the jorts war today? Well, we I don't know if we're ready for this. We would have got too much shit if we didn't bring something up. So we had to. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's actually super funny. Um, you know, I got to go with underrated for jorts because I mean, they're just something you don't see anymore. Jorts are the original squat suit. That's true. They'd go good with one of those earmuff hats, I think. (laughs) Oh yeah, they would. That'd be so good. (laughs) 
I love that. They got to be underrated. Honestly, jorts are like, I'm glad that everyone's bringing those back because they were. But you know what, though, is like everyone's bringing back jorts in the in the ones that look good. I don't know if we should bring back real jorts, you know, the ones <laughs> yeah. that went down. They were like capris almost, but they were like wide leg and. Those yeah. are real jorts, but I don't know if the world is ready for those again. Yeah, or something with like a big cargo pocket on it, but it's still denim too. It's oh yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, maybe toss a little chain on there. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! We don't want to get too <laughs> yeah too hot over here. So we can't even uh, may maybe even some of us here have you know different personal opinions specific on specific jorts, but we can all agree that jorts are underrated, I think, right? <laughs> yes, I think that we can. And I think that we should agree to disagree on all other points. <laughs> the important thing is we found some common ground on the yeah. jorts here. <laughs> this is the jorts treaty of yeah. 2023. That's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, last one for overrated, underrated. And I actually don't know how to pronounce his name. So I'll just call him by his nickname, overrated or underrated, uh, the Grizzly, Kira, Kira Kiracos Grizzly. I don't, I don't know how to say his <laughs> say his name actually. Kiracos Grizzly. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> my teacher, my teacher husband. <laughs> no, um. <laughs> we're gonna stop, we're gonna cut that clip and send it to him. Oh no. <laughs> I love that. Well, I think he's pretty highly rated, but I'd still say underrated. He is the ultimate moon lord. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, full bloat lord. Uh, wh- what? what? How, <laughs> why is how did that, that whole you, thing start? Yeah, yeah, what, what, why what is it that you and Grizzly kind there? of have a connection? <laughs> um, he just. I don't know. He just gained a following in the strength community. Cause it's, I don't know why it's so much fun to just go to anything he posts and say, greetings, my Lord. <laughs> or it's just like a community of its own. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's so great. Anyways. Um, one time I just posted a picture wearing a dress after I think nationals last year. And then it got a bunch of likes with the top one. Was from Kiriakos Grizzly, and it was just ooh, <laughs> like, <laughs> like a bunch of oohs, and it got like a few thousand likes. That single comment by itself. And did you know who he was at that time? I knew who he was. Yes, I did. So I was just losing so you were just thinking, how how comment. did I get so lucky? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. How was I chosen? <laughs> chosen by my lord. <laughs> So have you ever had an, any sort of DM back and forth with Grizzly at all or anything? I don't know if he speaks English, I guess, so probably that's a limiting factor. Um, yes, but they've been mostly on a similar note of let me just let me just check right now before I speak too soon, but uh... <laughs> it's been mostly oohs and ahs. It's, it's been mostly oohs and he sends me the heart eyes emoji <laughs> a lot in response. <laughs> <laughs> but no actual words actually wow i'm scrolling back and there's actually a lot of i still haven't gotten to the top yet um so is it mostly ooh, it's yeah. like what is it oh mini o's and an h or one o and a and a lot of h's or just all o's it's one o one capital o and then like probably like 20 small o's and that's it <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just love it so much. I have been chosen, and I will forever feel special. Sometimes he comments things like, his comments always show up first when I scroll through my Instagram. Like the other day, he just said full. <laughs> That's what he does. He says full. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So I do enjoy that. I've enjoyed that for a long time. Yeah, he's very, he gets me, he gets put, like, I I feel like, actually, the common ground I think that you and Grizzly share is 
people really like Grizzly. Like, I think, pe- you know, people genuinely, like, I don't think anyone has, like, a bad opinion about him. Uh, but people also love putting him in memes. <laughs> and, like, I feel like that's, uh, sometimes you get in that category where everyone has a pot, as, pot everyone really likes you, uh, but they also like to put you in meat. You know, you're, you, you end up getting put in memes quite a bit. Would you say that that's true? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm not on Grizzly's level, but that's one day <laughs> oh, when I can... there can only be one Grizzly, so... Yeah. I guess I just... <laughs> I guess I just gotta... I don't know what I have to do to get to that level, but... Um, more ooze? Yeah, I would... Like, I would more O's, I think. More ooze? Yeah. <laughs> it's a community for him, though. Like, it's just... Everyone in the comments section always just calls him my lord. It's the customary <laughs> greeting. Um, <laughs> he just does a lot of screaming quite often and uh, very unusual strength training methods. That's the other thing for him, too, is he does the strangest exercises with an awful lot of weight, though. It's kind of wild. Like, like 400 no- kilos will do... Yeah, there's no doubt he's strong, right? Like, he certainly, like, is strong. But the oddest things he does, like a Jefferson deadlift would be way too normal for him to do. I think so, yeah. Like, (laughs) there's a video of him trying to do the splits, and the caption just says, flexibility, 200 kilograms. And he (laughs) does the splits. It's insane. (laughs) Yeah, he is. I mean, he is legitimately like extremely strong and flexible for his size. And like the first videos I remember seeing him, they were like kind of almost like an almost like a bench press, except for it's not quite like a down and push up motion. Like he'd like like uh, it was almost like a f- forward and back thing where we would like throw it forward into a stomach and then like launch it back up. Like that's one of the iconic ones that I can think of. Yeah, it's very unconventional for sure. Yeah. That's another reason why he gets memed a lot. But that's why it's so awesome because it's so much weight. I do like the grizzly. It would be fun if you two were ever in the same place and could get a picture together. Though I think that would blow. I think that would completely explode. People would the, just uh, assume it's fake. Like they wouldn't believe yeah, that it actually yeah. happened. Oh. Oh, I think we got disconnected. Uh oh. Did we'll your, get it back quick. Did your long distance? Up. Did your long distance bill? Yeah, I ran me? out of minutes. I should have bought more. Uh, yep, gonna call collect on this one. What are some of those phone services where you pay for minutes? Verizon, AT and T. Okay, think I think uh, I lost you guys for a second. Well, I guess that's probably enough about the Grizzly, anyways. Like we can all agree he's <laughs> he's awesome. Oh, absolutely. We're just having the grizzly fan girl corner over here. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's, it is good news. It does look like uh, you, you passed overrated, underrated again this time. So, you, you did it again. Oops, you did it again. Nice. How many cool beans? Uh, you, oh. We don't give those out right yeah, now. You yeah, have to wait to until after you get off. Back, so you'll, yeah. you'll have to listen along what? next week like everyone else to hear about the cool beans. Oh. Uh, you know what? I've been a supporting member for ages, and I actually don't know how to watch the podcast uh before the other people oh yeah. it's very easy you just hop into the discord tanner posts the night that we record <laughs> wednesday nights he posts the link to view oh, it nice. yeah i create an event so there's an event Yeah, there's an discord. event yeah. so yeah if you go in there you've been on the event list all week so and a lot of times it's on wednesday nights obviously oh. tonight we're recording on thursday night but uh so now we do it via zoom actually because it's just become better uh, the way we do it now, it just works better. So you could just watch along via Zoom. If you ever get in there and watch live and put put your name on the Zoom <laughs> handle, people will get a really good kick out of that. So you, we yeah. need to get you to pop in there once just because uh, everyone would be excited about that. Oh, solid. Okay, I will definitely do that from now on. I've always meant to ask that question. Yeah, that is a good testimonial, though. Uh Big Jess is a supporting member and has know. been for a very long time. Right. Uh, Big Dan, Dan Bell is a supporting <laughs> member. Like, so no one out there, no matter how strong you think you are, you're not too strong to be a supporting member. If uh, Big <laughs> Jess and Big Dan can both be supporting <laughs> members. I'm sure most people that is the worry though. They don't want to be like the strongest supporting <laughs> member. So like they're hesitant to sign up, but here's proof. Like you won't be the strongest. So you can sign right. up. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you're safe. Uh, uh, well, that's really oh, cool. Uh, we appreciate, of course, you taking the time to get on. And uh, even though you are our neighbor to the north from Canada, I guess we're for sure going to be cheering for you at the Sheffield and hope to see you break some records and uh, hopefully uh, get a payday so you can maybe get a pair of lift shorts or lift shorts if you're really feeling crazy. You know, maybe we could work something Ooh. out there. <laughs> A little spicy, or yeah. <laughs> um, start really starting to go for us. <laughs> you, you. Unfortunately for you, we okay. will charge you double for lift jorts, though. So yeah, we have a thing in the oh, system. Okay, to flag we'll it. have to yeah. <laughs> use the money for a down payment and uh, get myself in trouble with rascal. But nobody, nobody needs to know if they yeah. see me wearing <laughs> lift jorts squatting. Who's gonna? Who, who's gonna know? Nobody's gonna. Nobody will be any the wiser. <laughs> Nobody's gonna. Uh, oh, they'll know. They'll know. Um, <laughs> so good. Good luck at Sheffield. Well, thanks for having. Yeah, yeah is there anything luck. we didn't didn't talk uh, about? Uh, you know, we talked about SBD. We talked about Rascal. Anyone else we should mention, or anything else you got going on that we should mention? Um. I don't think so. Honestly, if I get the chance, I'll try to. I'll try to drive down for the, um, I don't know, I've, what are you guys calling the, the Pyro's oh, thing the, that you're hosting? The, the Lift, Lift Hard Easy Classic. Yeah, July 22nd. If you oh, can yeah. make it here, we'd love to have you. Yeah, I don't think it's, it's not that crazy long of a drive. Um, so I, if I, if I can get the time off work, I will make the trip. Well, we will stay in touch on that because that would that now that would get you a double cool beans for sure. If you showed up for that. <laughs> well, yeah, that would do it for sure. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that would yeah, be very cool. Be cool beans. Yeah. All right. Awesome. We'll stay in touch on that. Uh, good luck and see you on July 22nd. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. All right. See you Thanks. later. Thanks, Jessica. Later. I had to look when she said it's not that far of a drive because I'm like, well, again, this is all pretty relative. But uh, is it a seven hour drive? Or? Oh no, 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 farther than that. Okay, ten, a little farther. Oh, that's pretty far. <laughs> Eleven <Yeah>. hours. <laughs> yeah, that's a ways. That's yeah. But at the same time, though, it's funny because for us, like for Aberdeen, you know, that's like going to Denver, and it's like, well, that's a day you do it. Like that's not a big no. Deal. Yeah, that's that's um, not. Not out of line. But it is funny to think like you could drive 11 hours and just. <laughs> or for like <laughs> us to go to Kansas City, like from yeah. Western Northeast South Dakota, it's about 10 hours probably. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, you crossed international borders. You drove for 11 hours and you ended up yeah. in Aberdeen, South Dakota. <laughs> it's kind of an anticlimactic uh, destination. <laughs> Normally. But. But, but not on uh, yes. July 22nd, twenty Not on July 22nd, it's not. Uh, that, it's uh, maybe the that most exciting. That would just continue to add to the mystique of this meet. It That's would. what kind of makes what the Lift Hard Live Easy Classic what it is, though, is that uh, here we are in western northeast South Dakota and got people like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Dan Bell coming to lift and companies like the Strength Co. and Barefoot and uh, uh, all this sort of thing. And Yeah, it's an anomaly. It is. It is. Do you ever remember, I was gonna, I just thought of this now, do you remember the line? There's a Rob Schneider movie where he goes, it's me, Jessica. <laughs> Do you remember that? That does sound familiar, but <laughs> I'm I don't pretty know. Sure, if... I'm pretty sure. Is, was it? Oh, oh, I'm hitting the button here. I'm, wasn't there a Rob Schneider movie called The Hot Chick where he turns into a girl? Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think it's in there where he's he says, it's me, Jessica, at some point. The only reason I remember that is because, you know, before memes existed and you just had to repeat the same movie lines oh, yeah. over and over. In high school, I had some friends that would say "It's me, Jessica" fifty times a day, every day for the entirety of high school. Yeah, um, and I just thought of that. Now I'm not sure that has to be from that movie. I don't know what else it would be from. That is what we had to do before memes existed, wasn't it? You know what else you had to do before memes existed? That I know I've mentioned this before, but it's worth noting here because I was thinking about it the other day. Is someone just told you by word of mouth you have to check watch this on youtube Mm, and then you watched that video on youtube and you watched it like 30 times (laughs) and then your buddies came over and you brought them to your computer not to your phone it was to your computer because 
you didn't have YouTube on a phone and you said, you've got to watch this. Like that's the, yep. how the first time you saw it every time was you were at your buddy's house and they're like, you got to see this. Yep. And then and you'd, you'd watch it down and watch and it. And if it was something funny, you'd, oh my God, that's so funny. You'd start it over and you just watch it again. And you don't do that yeah. anymore. Like it's no. the novelty of internet has worn off well, where that's well, nothing's that funny. I, also, part of it is that not everyone had it on your phone because now they'll say you got to watch it and you just, they text that to you and you just mm-hmm. pull it up on your phone and watch it right there. Before, you couldn't do that. Yep. So it was you and three other buddies watching it around yep. a computer and just like feeding off of each other's laughter. Mm-hmm. It was like, like it just made it experience. so much more. Yeah. And that's dead. That's gone. <sighs> Rest in peace, baby. Don't you remember doing that exact? Oh, like, can- we, we spent so much time on YouTube. Just yeah. any video you'd find. Oh, yeah, you got to watch it. It's so funny. It's so funny. Or just this video is crazy. Like all that stuff. And you would you do it. That's like half of what hanging out with your buddies was shortly. You know, when I think of like 2005, five six like right. around that area. Actually, even seven, eight, nine. I remember when I first went to college. Yeah. And it was just like, all right, you got nothing but time. And you could spend so much time on YouTube. And yeah, you'd sometimes you'd go down this rabbit hole. Like, all right. You get a few guys together and you just start watching dumb YouTube videos. And you're just yeah. cracking up and thinking it's so hilarious. Yeah, and it's like, um, uh, just look at it. Like the one that made me think of it again the other day was that video with the guy uh, screwing with the guy that's selling a car. And he's like, "Would you just look at it? Look mm. at it." You know, he's yes. like, "You know, yes, I see a car I like this, and I just, one. I just want to look at it. It makes me think. I, yeah, I want to look at it. <laughs> you look at it." And I had to show my wife had never seen that. My really? wife had never seen that before. And I'm really? like, you've got to watch that. And I forced her to watch the whole thing through its entirety. And she did. She found it slightly funny at a couple times. And I'm like, maybe this isn't funny anymore. Like, I don't know. But to oh. me, this was so funny at the time. There was some videos. Actually, it wasn't that long ago we were at Ryan's house doing this. It was actually before we went out one night. It was kind of like those things now where you watch like DJ Cumberbund and all that. And we yeah. start laughing at those videos, but we were watching, you know, it was a few of us. And we're like, Oh, remember when we watched this video in high school? We thought it was so funny. You'd bring some of them up and you start watching and you think this isn't actually funny at all. Like, <laughs> Why did we think this was funny? Was it because just dumb new videos had never existed? And so right. it was the excitement of it all. But there's nothing funny about this. Like the, the timing's bad. The video quality shitty. The audio quality shitty. There's no jokes. But when you're in high school, it was hilarious. Well, and I think part of it with TikTok, Instagram, stuff like that, it's the funny video market has advanced so, so far. far. We're like desensitized. It's like our standard of something being funny you ex- uh-huh. like you almost expect more oh, that's the other, like some of these videos you thought oh this is hilarious and it's a five and a half minute video and you wait until like four minutes in for the one funny thing to happen and yeah. now yeah with like tiktoks and all that yeah it, right that is true too like what about like unforgivable isn't that the name of the video where it's like it's like the guy is like <laughs> i just go to youtube and type in unforgivable it's got to be something with a button god i keep uh, hitting that damn button um i don't think uh, i've ever seen this one Oh, maybe uh, I'm. Yeah, I mean this video has 24 white. million views. That's it. Yep, I've never seen it. this. No, I've no never seen that. Is. Okay, and what year was that from? Like uh, uh, 16 years ago. Yeah, yeah. This is definitely it. And like, it's a four minute video, and you watch this whole thing. You, you maybe you have to watch it o- offline or whatever. And it comes to the whole thing, and like the last line of it is unforgivable. And that was the whole point of it. <laughs> kind of. Like, it's just like, it's, it's uh, like he's talking about, I think it's a story. Well, here's what I remember. People will know this and they'll watch it and it, I'll butcher it. And But I'm good at butchering stuff like this. But he's talking about uh, maybe going to like Chick-fil-A or someplace with uh, his girlfriend. And he's like, he tells her, he's like, get up there and buy me a chicken sandwich and maybe get it, get me a Coke to drink or something. And as I'm saying it out loud, I'm like, it's not funny, <laughs> but it was like, we thought it was so, and it, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. It's got 24 million, uh, views he, here still, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and I, like, I think he made spinoffs off of this. Even it was so popular, you know, he's like had multiple unforgivable videos. Yeah. I, yep. I mean, there's just like old YouTube is a whole nother thing. Like, yeah. It's, it's just so far back there that these things have kind of almost been left behind. I'm surprised you hadn't seen this one. Yeah. That, this that, one before. Yep. Don't know a thing about that one. But 16 years ago, what does that put it at then? That puts it at, uh, uh, 
I mean, 2007. Six ish, seven, yeah. yeah. Seven, yeah. yeah. Yes, that is old YouTube. That is. Yep. I was a senior in high school then. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Interesting. We did talk about Big Jess with, uh, talk about the Arnold with Big Jess. We are booth 201, and Big Meg Swats is beh- right behind us. Right across from is uh, Big Matt Vinson. Meg Squats is the other one that's really funny. That, And I think she even made comments about this, that you meet her in person and you're like, oh, you're like this tiny girl. Yeah. Her photos on Instagram make her seem yeah. like this giant woman. Yeah. And then you meet her and I think she is like 5'3". Right. Like, oh, wow. Like I, my, my mental picture is so different of what who you are. Well, we, we experience that a lot in general with people just being like, both over six foot and just like what Jess was talking about, the powerlifting community, a lot of people are like, you guys are giants. Mm-hmm. And like for us around here, it's kind of like we're, we're almost, I mean, not it's, average height, but, but it's just not, it's not noteworthy in any way. No, you know? no. Like it is almost what, like for Mastonomics gym, for example, we are kind of just average height. I would say like, oh, I don't know I'm, what the, that's what I said a lot of days I've said it a ton of times. A lot of days yeah. I go there and I would be one of the smaller people there by <laughs> height and weight. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and then Arnold, uh, big Travis is right beside us from obsidian ammonia. And then, uh, live large is just uh, one aisle off of us. And then uh, of course, grant at the strength co has his big Island closer to the main stage and then barefoot is going to be there is it going to be like a luau party over there I, yeah i think you get like island LA. vibes yeah <laughs> i think he's bringing in the island boys even <laughs> is the island boys would that be funny if grant he just had this secret and he's like i really went all out i booked the <laughs> island boys to be at my booth all weekend <laughs> are the island boys still relevant or is that over uh, i'm not sure that they're relevant but i think they're still kind of around yeah we haven't been able to get rid of them yet. Yeah, I haven't pinned them down. <laughs> One of these days. Yeah, the island boys. <laughs> so come uh, come see us at this week, right? This week at the Arnold. Hopefully we made it there. Hopefully we get, we're getting set up. Oh, God, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Hopefully we're not just getting set up. Hopefully we are set up and we're selling stuff to people that also came to buy stuff. Oh, I hope so. I really hope so. <laughs> but if you are anywhere in the area... Of Columbus, Ohio, make the trip, especially if you've never done it before. You got to do it at least once. Uh, we might even have some merch that's only available to purchase at the Arnold, you know, in person. We might even have potentially a top secret peek into the future of what could be Ooh. coming. And, and that's a big deal. I mean, I I don't want to hype this up too much, but this is a game changer. <laughs> this is a game changer, and that's. We're not really saying that. I mean, we're kind of joking around slightly, but we really mean that, though, too. Like, this is a, it's a big deal for Massonomics, for sure, what we, uh, but, hopefully. But we don't know if this will actually be ready to be previewed. It right. will be nothing for sale, we're but co- it would be a little preview of. We might have demo, yeah, and we're yeah, really hoping the, to have that. Of what the R&D department has been up to. Yes, yes. I hope we, we well, we could have crude crude examples we could, there i guess yeah, at the least it's not but as exciting hopefully though. we have a pretty polished yeah. uh demo of what we got there but also there there for sure will be some merch that you can't buy online you know that's arnold ex- I'll, we'll call it arnold exclusive merch mm-hmm. that you can only get your hands on there yeah <laughs> yeah so it's arnold just, exclusive just show up just get yeah. there and uh, please do check out our YouTubes that we've been pumping out. New YouTube video this week. Yeah. Uh, it's only been out as of right now for a couple hours, but it's doing good. It's trending. I'd say it it's trending. trending. It's on the front page. It's on uh, just looking at what YouTube I just saw something says. on Reddit about it. Yeah. it's. Uh, I think there's an article in the Washington Post about it, too. <laughs> uh, but do make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're not. We are... We are, I mean, two weeks in a row, I'd say we've successfully now made our that's best trend. This that's a trend. That's not an accident anymore. Yeah, that's now yeah. a trend. Yeah, two weeks in a row with new YouTube videos. Speaking of other people that are going to be at the Arnold, I saw Mr. Gluck of Gluck's Gym said he's going to be stopping Big by. Gluck. You know, I, the thing I got me wondering, did Brandon Campbell ever say if he's going to go or not? Well, he used to be saying he was. I assume I now he's not because he hasn't followed up with us on that. Well, but maybe he's trying to surprise us, or maybe we he need to put does, the pressure on him. I think fairly regularly listen to the podcast, so 
I bet when he hears this, he'll let us know that whether he's he was either just on being his a way silly there goose or, and he's yeah. going to be there. Yeah, but um, I haven't heard anything else. So I'm kind of kind of feeling like maybe he's not coming, mm. but it would be great if he does. That would be yeah. That would be. I would love it if if uh, Big Brandon would come. That'd be super fun. Uh, well, speak else? for yourself, I guess. There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, screw that guy. Uh, we have other through. things on the list. Uh, okay, we can run through. Okay, we can run through a couple of these quick because right. they're small. Did you watch anything of the NBA All Star Game, Tanner? I did. Big Mac McClung. Uh, yeah, showed you, up and were showed you familiar out. with him before that? I was f- familiar with Big Mac. Uh, I, cl- I, f- I was too because his yeah. dunks have been on yeah. Instagram since he was in high school. Yeah, like his dunks yes. have been around forever. And I was actually surprised when his name popped up because I thought I haven't heard that name in a few years. I didn't realize he was floating through the D League, G League, whatever they call it now, and then had just recently signed like a two week contract with the Sixers. But I, it's funny. I heard. I thought I heard them say two week contract. Yeah. I think what he signed is a two way contract. Okay. Yes, they did say two way. What is two way? Two way. I think that has something to do with their G League players slash NBA like. They can get brought up and move down, and it like okay. greatly increases their minimums. They get like, I think they get fifty percent of like r- minimum pay for a regular NBA contract. Like whatever okay. the league minimum is, a two way player gets fifty percent of that, and it over a certain period of time, it allows them to be able to bring them up or down. Gotcha. That's what I think. That's what he's on is a two way contract. I don't. I'm probably a little muddy on the rules of that, but that's what Mac is on now. But with the Sixers, all right. But well, uh, he made the dunk contest fun to watch. Did you Did uh, you watch the actual dunk contest? Yeah, I mean, yeah. well, no, I didn't watch it live, but I saw. Okay. I watched all of the dunks. You know, it's, there's through. two things. One is whenever someone's closer to six feet, dunks just look really cool because they have to get up so much. You know, yeah. So he He's has the that fourth go- shortest uh, ever to win the dunk. Contest. Is he really? Yeah, okay. fourth shortest. Yeah. So he had that going for him, and then the other one is when you hit all your dunks first try, it takes away that. Oh, he's trying. He's trying. It just makes yeah. it look so effortless too. And, and I'm pretty sure he hit all of them first try. He so. hit all of them first try. Yeah. He got fifth all all fifty scores except one. Yeah, on I one think, dunk, I, I think, think Lisa, Lisa Leslie, Leslie hanging on a forty nine. Gave him a forty nine, yeah. and yeah. I'm like, really? <laughs> yes. From the Russian judges, the one forty nine. <laughs> that the the dunk contest is all about hype, though, and he certainly had the hype, and then he was just delivering, so it's like a perfect yeah. storm. Yeah, yeah, I was I was entertained watching that. But figured... if you're an NBA team, team, why do you not get him out on the court? And just, just, I mean, I'm talking just money. I don't care if he's even good enough. Like it'd be like, he can't be like seriously deficient that he can't even ball a little bit. Like Mm -hmm. it's just, everyone's excited about, about him right now. You got to get him out there. Just very market, get him in the game in the fourth quarter or whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's just, people want to see it. And especially little kids. It's like they hear dunk contest winner. They're like, Oh, like that means more than almost anything to, to, I did like hearing uh, Anthony Edwards' comments over All Star Weekend about the da- everyone sitting out all the damn time. Yeah, because uh, that that does piss me off. Like when I go to the and he, he said the same thing Kobe said a few years ago is you know like a lot of people spending their hard earned money to go to these games and might be the only game they go to and they're hoping to see their you know star players and easy for Anthony Edwards to say because he's like twenty four. I don't right. even know, but and he's also on a team that kind of has to fight and like right, you know, it, games right. do matter. But you know, like, when someone like Kobe says it in 2019, it means mm-hmm. something completely different because a, it's Kobe Bryant. B, he's 35 years old and he's still playing all the games. And uh, but I do appreciate that sentiment of like, yeah, we should probably try to play. Like, this is the product we're selling here. It, it is. It, it kills the product, is what it right. Means. It's a not a good product going on the court. Right, right. So I did just like, that was the yeah. other, my, my other takeaway because I am getting a little soured on all these guys sitting out all the time. Like, it's overkill. And mm-hmm. I don't know if I've talked about this, and it's it, this could apply to all sports, but they're talking about uh, making a rule where if they're going to do these, uh, what what is it called, um, fatigue management sit-outs yeah, or like what whatever them, yeah. the hell that is, like that they have to do it. I don't know how you control this, but that they have to do it on home games rather than away games. Oh. So if they're going to sit them out, you know, beg. no, you do it at home. You sit out at, to your home crowd, and when you travel, you play those games. Yeah, that or even just making it known, like, because, like, that was the thing with you is, like, they don't right. even have to, like, make the call until, 
the very last minute. Right. Uh, even just giving people, like, if they are going to be on fatigue management, okay, like, they have to decide. But they don't want to do that, Ben, because then people are like, I'm not going to go. Well, I know. I Well, right. I know, but that but that right. is showing, like, how it is hurting the product, right. you know? Right, exactly. Uh, anything else from the All-Star game, though? The dunk uh, contest, that's the... Yeah, the dunk the contest big. is the main thing. I watched, Especially, like, I mean, Mac McClung just re... re- brought the dunk contest back to life honestly mm-hmm. like it just but if they had like three guys that are all around six foot that went and did the dunk contest it would yeah. be so fun to watch and you know guys that really want to do it or it stars always, they but they never yes. get stars in it anymore yeah. you know that's the other thing yep i caught like a little bit of the three-point contest which you know whatever sure fine um yeah. i did watch some of the all-star game but man the, like some that's of the too efforts hard to put in is just yeah it's a way too low key. Yeah, I can't watch that. But they do. The NBA does a good job of hyping up their All Star, uh, you know, events and making it seem like a fun yeah. thing. The NFL doesn't have anything on that level of making no. you care at all. And even the MLB, it's still there's the home run derby, but no one outside of that does anyone really care about anything. I don't. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I think the MLB All Star Game like historically has more significance, and they've done things like I think isn't the World Series home field advantage decided by the? It's something like that. Yes, all yes. the who in like which actually puts makes it like oh no this game this game is meaningful. Mm-hmm. You know that's a good thought there maybe, but yeah the NF oh NFL Pro Bowl is the biggest joke in the world. They don't even, they stopped playing it this year. Like it's yeah, just, it's not uh, even, though they played, uh, yeah. they played uh, flag football. I think right. That's what they did. Yeah, That's probably just, a better choice, honestly, because the is. game's a joke. Yeah. But the NBA like does a good, like they get entertainment. They have yeah. post Malone come in, like they have acts and it's like a fun, fun thing as it goes on. Well, though. part of it, NBA players are really cool. Like, yes, they, you know, they NBA do. Players are, the NBA are does cool. probably the best job of making their stars be yeah. like, faces and personalities that that you right. know recognize and like relate to or at least want to watch like right. you know the nfl has those people but also when you're wearing helmets and a pad pa- helmets pads and all that like you're just disguised and it's harder to pick yeah. you out until the announcers say your name ten thousand times yeah for sure so that was our nba coverage for the week there was that um i have one more thing in here about a new logo tanner do we have enough time i don't, I don't know what that means i'm just curious what well, that is so you're uh i think you could say over the lifetime of massonomics you become more familiar with the graphic design industry you know what's well, certainly what's, much more than without what's Masonomics, hot right? what's not what pops what doesn't yeah. pop you know i know what so much more about popping than i used to so you have that going for you, and you also happen to be a bit of an automotive enthusiast when it comes to a certain brand known as Buick. Now, what if Does I were to Buick tell you have a new logo? that Buick has a new logo? Really? Why don't you go do a little Google in here? Okay. And you can see it's a natural evolution, but I'm curious what your uh, initial take is here. Well, I got to make sure. So it's it doesn't say be, it's just it's the three shields with no circle. Is that the new logo? Yep, three shield, and it's almost like three. Some people almost three, think it's like three daggers or three teeth. It looks. Uh, I would say it looks like more European to me, almost in some way. Like it looks uh, has like a European element. It's it's. I think it's a definite improvement. It looks not so old. See, right? and like, isn't that funny when people talk about yeah. brands and like. For people that aren't as familiar with design and all of that, it's all a logo, a brand, whatever, who cares? But what you're saying right away is the very first thing that I'm sure Buick would love to hear, and I agree with you, is that, oh, this doesn't look old all of a sudden. You know, like when you see those three shields on their like stepped, you know, each one's stepped up a little higher than the one before, and it's in a circle in Buick, you think grandma. That is the first thing you think for sure is grandma. And when you see this, you don't necessarily really think grandma. You're like, oh, that's Buick? Oh, no, okay. Especially if you see that on the front of an all-blacked-out grill, you think like, oh, that looks cool. What is that? And did you see some of the you pictures of it like, mocked up on a car? Did you see yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. And it kind of looks sleek all of a sudden, doesn't it? All of a sudden, you, you it almost makes you say, what kind of car is that? Yeah. You and, know, like where you're like. And that like, is sure. immediately, like, that's what a logo does. And it gives you, like, a whole new take on the brand. And it, it can reinvigorate things like that. And it just gives you a new perspective. But appara- what's extra interesting about this is apparently um, when they were doing some car rendering, car design, they someone in that department had put together, like, this stripped-down version, basically like a placeholder of the Buick logo. They didn't put the yeah. actual Buick logo on the car. 
and I think it was the 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 GM or uh, who was it? some some like CEO. It was like the CEO of GM or some higher up of of GM saw it and was like, "What is this logo?" And they're like, "Oh no, that's just an accident. We didn't switch it out." And he's like, "No, no, I really like that." And they actually oh. pursued it to the point of changing the logo based off of that happy accident. You could say that was a happy little accident, wasn't it? Yeah. So it's surprising how that can work sometimes. But seeing the mock-up on some of these cars, I mean, it still it doesn't help that Buick only sells like these really lame well, little tiny go crossovers. On a rendezvous or whatever. Yeah. yeah, like they don't have any cars. It's just these dumb little grandma crossovers. So that still kills it a little bit. But some of these mock-ups do have a concept car of some kind with the three shields on it. And it looks pretty tough. It looks cool. Yep. I am a bit of a Buick guy. I mean, as we all know, historically, so yeah, you know, get so back now, into the Buick game. You know, if they bring out an all blacked out Grand National with this thing on it, oh, that could look Ooh. pretty tough. If Buick, I don't know why they don't try to make a run at bringing back the Grand National. Actually. I think they like, just that's understand that their brand is just they've yeah. tarnished it that far. I think they could do it, though. I think that if they did it right, it could be done and people could just go nuts well, over it. That's what they would have to do. If they really were serious about reinvigorating the brand, they'd have to have that halo car, that thing for people to get excited about. Right. And if they did, if they brought back some But new... they would really need to not screw it up. They oh, would need they to would have to go a, like a, a, like a seriously high horsepower option, like something mm-hmm. that's like... Well, it's really? what they'd have to do is basically take like the, they have like the Cadillac black wings is what they are now. Right. And they'd have and to basically just take that and make it into like this all blacked out yeah. Buick with the new logo. And you'd go, damn, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And call it the Grand National. Yeah. And that would be awesome if they did that. But yeah, mm, I just think that the Buick brand is probably so far past that at this yeah. point that it's too sully, just, isn't it? Just wishful thinking now. Tiger Woods just beat it to death. Didn't <laughs> Tiger Woods and Shaq just and killed Peyton the brand. Manning. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, those guys, they're not still spokesmen, are they? No, Tiger Woods is Genesis now, isn't he? Okay. But I don't know if Shaq or any of those guys are even spokesmen for the brand anymore. I don't even know if Buick. Shaq's probably a spokesman for seven different car companies. <laughs> just had to guess. He probably, he probably has a car. He probably has a car sponsor, an SUV sponsor, a truck sponsor. He has a car insurance sponsor, the general. the general. That's right. Call the general and save some time. That would, uh, I'm just trying to find if we can find a quick answer to this to Shaq endorsements. It has to be just a crazy list. Icy hot. That's sort of the top of it, right? Let's see if we can find a full run, full run down here. Uh, Oh, come on. Yeah, Icy Hot's on there. The General. Um, uh, Papa, what's it? Papa John's, John's Pizza. Yeah. He has that. Um, Is Papa John's Pizza good? I don't know. See, we never had one in Aberdeen. I think there's well, one Oh, no, we used to. Really? There was? Oh, yeah. Really? It's where um, just to the uh, west of Burger King. Is where it was at. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, in that little tiny building yeah. there. It's like crop insurance little, or something now. Yeah, I don't think you could go in it even. Hmm. I mean, you could go in it, but I don't think you could dine in. Wow. I, I'm i not sure. Yeah, I when that. I first came here, when I first moved here for college, they had it, had it there. But I don't remember it. It was too expensive when I was in college. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't yeah, five. It's... It wasn't like... Three Hot pizzas readies. for five dollars total, or whatever. Yeah, I'm okay. I found a list of some of Shaq's uh, endorsements. Some of these are obviously very old, but Burger King, the Shaq Pack. I don't remember that. That doesn't ring a bell for me at all. Uh, triple Double Oreos. I don't remember that either. Reebok. That was a big one, but that's been a long time ago. Wheaties, Pepsi, uh, Icy Hot, Taco Bell, Buick, Gold Bond, Vitamin Water. Uh. None My favorite ones. is profession the in the, 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 this point in time professional athletes being sponsored by major soda companies. Oh, I know it's so awesome. like the, the most ridiculous <laughs> thing. Just that, the definition like of in, selling out, isn't it? No, in like 1996, that didn't seem. That oh, weird, that, yeah, then it wasn't just, a thing at all. But now I'm like, really, Sprite is your main sponsor? Do you, like you're not drinking Sprite, probably. Like okay, and also along those lines, do you know what the deal with Sierra Mist is? No, what? It is now Starry. 
Oh, the, I've seen Starry. Yeah, it was all over. It was all over Sierra. the NBA All Star Game. Yeah, they got rid of Sierra Mist and they've rebranded it to Starry. So talking to more rebrands. Okay, Starry. How do you spell that? S T A R R Y. Yeah, S T A R R Y. So is that better than Sierra Mist? I th- I'm assuming it's the exact same thing. I think it's just a visual. I think okay. it's just a, a rebrand from a name standpoint and design. Just trying to keep up with Sprite, then I suppose it is. Yeah, and Sierra Mist does sound kind of old. You know, in yeah. comparison, I mean, the name just sounds old. Yeah. But Sierra Mist. Huh. Forgot that that was a, existed. I know. Yeah. No, no one says, oh, I'll take a Sierra. Like, like calls it <laughs> like, out by sorry, name. We you, only, you say Sprite, right, and then they go, oh, Sierra What is Mist, Sprite? Go, Sprite's a Coke product. Yeah. Right? So Sierra Mist is the Pepsi version. Yeah. So you call it out by Sprite, and then they go, Sierra Mist, and you go, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. But no one's like, I'll take a Sierra Mist, and they go, Sprite. And you're like, no, 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 no. I got standards here. <laughs> <laughs> it really needs to be a Sierra Mist. <laughs> yeah, but they did have Starry was all over all types of stuff for the for the All Star game. Okay, which I don't think it was that long ago. Sprite was doing that. You know, Sprite always seemed like the NBA soda of choice. Or I should say, yeah, it does like that, especially forever. like the players, like they're sponsoring all these players. It's funny. It's like, yeah, Sprite is the. Sl- Do you feel like Sprite is like being clear is like a less shitty. <laughs> Uh, pop well, for you or something like that. Maybe, like I don't, and there's no caffeine either, so maybe okay. that's. Uh, so it's just sugar water without the caffeine. So yeah, that's all right. pretty much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, if I'm at a restaurant, like if I'm going through a drive-through and I get like a number, whatever the hell it is, yeah, and I can't see anything on the menu that, you know, that <laughs> indicates uh, they might have vitamin water or something. My go-to right. is you know Sprite. It's, it's, yeah, right, right. Is there a diet Sprite? Yeah, there is. Okay, pretty sure there is. I don't I mean, know. I'm sure yeah, there is. There is right? yeah. Oh, Sprite yeah. Zero, I think it looks like. Oh, okay. Which, that, I mean, that's diet, right? You know what else there is? What? There's straps from Spud Inc. Oh, tell you me You can more. find them at spud-inc-straps.com. Spud Inc. started because the lifting straps available at the time were not tough enough to handle the daily punishment that comes with training as a power lifter or that could easily fit in a gym bag. Spud Inc. created their straps to withstand whatever your training puts them through. Finally, training gear that works as hard as you do, damn it. Whether you're looking for belts, harnesses, or deadlift straps, Spud Inc. has you covered. Check them out at spud-inc-straps.com. Uh, free shipping on all domestic orders of $75 or more. That excludes Alaska, Hawaii, and international orders. Let them know that your good buddies at Massonomics sent you at Spud Inc. That's it. For that and app. if you're a fan <laughs> of Spud Inc., be sure to check them out at the Arnold. I don't know if they have a booth this oh, year. Oh, do they not really? I was just looking today. I did not see them on the list. I just assumed they did because they're always I there. Sure, but that's what I thought too. Maybe it was. I might have missed them. I actually meant to. I was even going to mention message Spud and ask him if they got a booth because I didn't look like I saw them on the list. What in Which the I, hell? I'll be sad if they're not. You'll, but you'll just have to go to their website and buy their stuff. The old good old here, fashioned. I'll, I'll way. see if I can find them on the list. I'll do one more quick look here. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Ain't looking too hot for them. Oh, okay. I gotta hit the load more results button. Who <laughs> haven't got to the S's yet? Uh, yeah, not looking like they're there. Okay. Well, maybe there'll be a last minute entry. They could be up. You never know. You never know. <laughs> All right. Today's episode of the Massonomics Podcast is also brought to you by the fine folks over at Texas Power Bars. Texas Power Bars is the original, the best, the most awesomest power bar available. Uh, They have a wide variety of bars, everything from the original Texas Power Bar to the Texas Squat Bar, Texas Deadlift Bar, Texas All-American Bar, or even the Starting Strength Bar. Uh, Their bars are available in a variety of finishes, including, uh, what is it, Tanner? Zinc. Zinc. Chrome. Bear Steel. Yep. uh, Yeah, Cerakote. All that good stuff. So Black Zinc, yeah. If you want to get a Texas Power Bar for yourself and see what the legendary name is all about, be sure to visit TexasPowerBars.com. Thanks, Texas Power Bars. Well... We didn't cover everything this week, but we covered a lot of stuff, right? And yeah, we, we still think, didn't uh, get through everything on the list, but no, we did pretty good. It all goes to show you sometimes it's not what you know, Tommy, it's who you know. Mm-hmm. 
Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Couldn't have said anything that made more sense yourself, could you, that was more <laughs> applicable to this specific situation. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, please uh, check us out at the Arnold. Or if you got a friend that's going to the Arnold, this happens like 30 times a year when we're there. They say, oh, my friend so-and-so couldn't get there, but they're a huge Massanomics fan, and they said I have to stop by and – get something for them and say hi, uh, please do that. And if you uh, are there yourself, please make sure to stop by and say hi. That's uh, the funnest part of being there is selling a whole bunch of stuff and getting the money for it. And the second second funnest part is getting the other money from selling stuff. (laughs) And then the third funnest part is getting more money. (laughs) (laughs) Like, like after like nine of those that we could (laughs) keep repeating, we could get to like 10 and the 10th coolest part is meeting all the people. So, yeah. Uh, first, or, make sure to get us the well, money. Well, Waffle House like, goes in there somewhere too, doesn't it? That's true. <laughs> Waffle House, uh, Hubert's Polish Kitchen. I am yeah. really looking forward to Hubert's Polish yeah. Kitchen. We might do, we said, we might do a food vlog for our trip here. I think just, we better do that. There's some just uh, interesting stops along well, the way. Well, we got to do like a Chili's. Yeah, thing we'll do too. like a it's Chili's kinda, run at some point. Yeah. Get some Waffle House in. It'll be a Maybe first time. Maybe a dreaded, uh, I can't even remember the place anymore because it's so fake. Oh, What's Red Robin. Place? Red Robin. <laughs> I'm still not sold on that. Everyone keeps saying, you know, continues to this yeah. day to tell me that it, like, they believe we'll, it to we'll be We'll go real. up to it, and there'll be a bunch of cars in the parking lot, and then we'll go up to the door, and it'll look like it's really busy, but we'll get there, and it's just actually graphics on the window. It's like yeah. Home Alone, you know? It just looks like there's yeah, people inside, yeah. but then you get there, and it's <laughs> like, it's like a, car, a cardboard cutout of Michael Jordan. <laughs> uh, Kevin McAllister was like a savant for, like, being able to set all that stuff up all by pulleys like from one point in the room like how did you set that up and like you got michael jordan drinking a greek drinking a beer over there yeah yeah, this kid was gifted in many ways i i still think it's going to be the thing where you go up and touch it and the whole cardboard (laughs) facade falls down in in a poof of dust yeah like i could see it It makes sense to me uh but I do like the idea of a food blog on a road trip. Yeah. Uh, oh, and you know, we I hate to say this, but if people need another incentive, technically, you kind of are getting things at a discount when you buy them at the booth. That's true. That's true. And we got a sale on if you buy more than one shirt, they, it's cheaper yeah. and cheaper. You Teaser one for two 30, shirts. one for 30, two for 50, and you're skipping shipping. So you're really coming out ahead. Yeah, that's true. Load up. We. It sounds like there's quite a few uh, Mastonomics crew members that are going to be there. So that is going to be really fun. Yes, it is. And, uh, yes. And so that, that well, we want to make this clear. Like there's a lot of people, I shouldn't say a lot, but there's a fair number of people every year that they just don't really say much. They buy a bunch of things. They check oh, out, yeah. we give them their card. And uh, while they're walking away, they go, I uh, really like the podcast. See ya. And then they leave and like, no, that's yeah. what you would lead with. Like, we don't know if you're a fan, if you get anything right. that's going on here. Like if and you prob- listen to the podcast yeah. or you're in the discord or any of that, say it and make, make it sure clear. to tell us. Yes. Yeah, make sure to tell us right away. If you listen to the podcast and you're a fan or whatever, make sure to let us know because a lot of you people don't probably take it, maybe take that for granted, but a lot of people have no idea who we are, what our company is. They're just walking by and they think something looks cool, so they buy it. So we don't know who's who, whether you're a fan or just a a customer that day because I guess there's different categories, right? Some people are just customers, Mm -hmm. but some people are really really in on it. And yes, please let us know because that does happen. And then it's like, Oh no, we want to have a conversation. Oh, yeah, with you. It's, it's like, way more fun. We can joke about a bunch of stuff yeah. and it's just, it makes the yeah. whole experience better. So yeah, if you're know what we got going on, like lead with that and we'll, we'll have a yeah. great time. That's a good point. And uh, make sure to get a picture and all that stuff. That's, that's a uh, uh, fun. Mm-hmm. I like looking back on those after the, fa- you know, like we're driving home and people are still posting. Oh, pictures just yeah. And stuff t- like tagged that. and all types of, it's just awesome to see like the things you yeah. pop up in after it's done. Yes. All right. Is that it for this one? I think that's it. Only took us two uh, two hours and 20 minutes. Unless you're uh, really ready to dive in. <laughs> Should we finally dive in on this one? <laughs> uh, uh, Tommy, where can they find you at? You can find me at Tomahawk underscore D. You can follow me at Tanner underscore Baird, but just make sure to please follow Massonomics at Massonomics. See ya. See ya.